Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. Check us out at that address for everything you need to know about our community, monthly giveaways, and nightly live streams. You can even support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player. And last but not least, you can catch the live recordings of these podcasts every single Thursday night on our Twitch channel. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. everyone welcome to four player podcast this is episode 756 it is may 18th 2023 i'm your host nick henderson joined tonight by brad simons hello christopher guthridge hello and christopher davis good evening and, former uh, and probably future host chris davis no, you did great. You did great last week. Thank this you for holding me, dude. He was coming for the podcast today, too. He heard Nick was sick, and he was like, let me get some oh. more of that hosting duties. Oh. I mean, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could literally take over from here. I wouldn't give a shit. But, uh, been you doing know. This sh- my fucking, <laughs> you can my pay the taxes, two-year-old too. You can host this fucking <laughs> podcast, this show we've been doing for 15 fucking years. 16? How, how, how long is it? I mean, it was one of those things. I was listening to the podcast from last week. And I was like, I know Chris Davis is a very intelligent, competent person. He's got this. But, I, you know, I've been doing this for, <laughs> for so long and I very rarely, like, hand it over to someone else to do. So, like, every time someone else hosts the podcast and I listen to it, I start out the show, like, just, like, biting my knuckles. <laughs> it's like, what's it going to be? What's it going to be like? Is it going to be good? I don't know. Not to say that I know that I'm good. I don't think I don't. I don't know. Am I good? Am I a good host? I don't fucking know. Tell yeah, me in the are. comments. Yeah. All right. Anyways. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate your honesty, Chris. You're better than Redfall. Um, uh, in mm, why would you have to s- twist the knife, Chris okay. Davis? Okay. Um, first, full uh, transparency sake. If you haven't been paying attention to my Twitter or anything, I uh, I may sound like shit tonight. I actually have the Rona, so um, that sucks. But I have been playing a lot of Zelda, so that's less sucky, I guess. Um, Nick, this is your so, first time with coronavirus, isn't it? It is my first time with coronavirus. Wow. Yes. Wow. Uh, and, you know, you know, I was thinking to myself, like, as I started to realize this was happening, uh, because I was not at home, I was travel. I was literally, it was the travel day that I started to feel sick. Mm. Like, the day we got off the cruise ship, I was like, I'm starting to feel not well. Please don't be this. Please, <laughs> please don't be COVID. Uh, and then it was like the travel day that it kind of hit me. And I was in the airport, and we, I was like, I'm starving, I gotta eat something, so I ordered some lunch, and I took a sip of Dr. Pepper, and it tasted like fucking water. And I was mm. like, uh, uh, mm, yeah, there I think... Is. Where are I those 27 this... different flavors? <laughs> They're gone. Day's gone! Day's, Day's gone. gone. <laughs> it's on the last one, then, who has gotten gone. it. Day's gone. Uh, so, you know, I was, uh, <coughs> no, no one hasn't gotten it, either. Oh, really? you're not the, you're not, okay. You're not the one. Yeah, no one hasn't hmm. gotten it. Um, and you know, I, got, I knew it was always. I knew it was going to happen eventually. I was sitting. I was thinking to myself, like, this is my worst case scenario. As I started to realize it was happening, and I was like, wait, no. Worst case scenario would be like if I started to feel sick on like day two of the trip. That would be nightmare scenario. But luckily, it was the very very end. Uh, traveling sucked asshole, but I made it home, and now I'm just recuperating. So. Luckily, I have Zelda and uh, and more Jedi Survivor to play. So wow. it's been keeping me distracted. But anyways, enough about that. I know Brad's eager to talk about this there fantasy critic. Um, I'm not going to bother with ho- too much housekeeping this week. There's not a lot to update you on. Yeah, there is. Davis. Bitch. No, bitch. I mean, like, oh. fantasy critic there is. I'm saying just general oh. housekeeping is not a lot oh, to yeah, say. You know the drill. Well, okay. If we're, you like our show, go review us. If you're not in our Discord, join our Discord. All that good stuff. But let's talk about fantasy, fantasy critic. critic. Mm, that's, that's all that matters cool. these days is the fantasy critic. <laughs> we do mm, a, a little gaming talk on the side. Uh, so, so, do you um, have like a rundown, Nick, of the fantasy critic? Or no, well, to be honest, I I looked at the fantasy critic uh, at six o'clock today to see if there were any like new bids. There's no new bids. Um, I know y'all mentioned Mortal Kombat mm. last week, but now we actually have official details on Mortal Kombat, and that was technically a news topic, but it's also very relevant to our fantasy critics, so we can There's talk about it here. There's been some tragedies. There's been some tragedies. Okay, so why don't you... You're probably more familiar. I did do an update on the Google Doc today, but I, I don't have everything 
recounted in my my brain right now. So uh, I know we didn't talk about humanity yet. I know you you got that on your list and are what pulled like eighty five on Open Critic or something. So that's pretty good. But uh, yeah, pretty good, Nick. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe really good. My hey, one dollar humanity. They all should have gone after that. at when you all saw it bid and then you watched a trailer and you're like what is this oh, trash yeah. i didn't realize it was from the guy that uh did uh luminous and res and uh testers effect you gotta pay attention no uh the, no sure that one that one uh did well I, if I'm i would have done i would have done it but you know honestly the game looked good i played the demo i talked about it on the podcast there was no secrets here we all knew what it was y'all watched me y'all listened to me on my segment about humanity surely we're taking was it wait, was this last week that you talked was this on last no, week's podcast you were probably on the podcast <laughs> i don't remember that at all <laughs> no, i know Lord. which is well, like, it must have been last week when i wasn't here it's on playstation plus or whatever so i'll i'll be playing it i didn't get a chance to play it uh this week for the podcast so i'll play it uh next week because it is a game i'm very excited to play and honestly i mean probably more of y'all should be i don't know yeah i mean dude i got it's zelda still, and it's star good. wars to play i like i'm like no yeah, obviously but if you want to like the end of you know, those. expand your horizons, play some humanity. Um, let's see, expand my horizons. But see, that's not the only that, that's not the tragedy. Uh, and other people have had tragedies, but but my tragedy, since I'm talking, I guess this motherfucker is, doesn't have what tragedy. I don't no, want to I, hear I, you I do, I do. anymore, I, Brad. You're just not paying attention. No, 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 I don't give a shit what game came out and scored poorly for you or whatever did like you have 70 something points on the board oh yeah but nick it's, not only, about your, it's not only about your bad list let me talk about my tragedy um food Great. And melodies of- weeping for you nick this is a safe space let Please. brad talk about his pain yeah i mean come on we all want to do well no, no, here. No, no. I'm sorry, I was listening to last week's podcast and Brad was like using every opportunity he could to just th- to pile on me. That's what I was list. saying, because like I'd be surprised if these other guys were being nice about your list. Was no, 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 Brad, really they weren't even talking out? about my list. They weren't even talking about my list. You would just casually be like, we, we at least we don't all have Nick's list, and you would just say shit like that well, over and I over mean, again. What do you mean? You mean uh, patronize your list? I mean, look, look, Fuga <laughs> Melodies of Steel 2. The first bit. game was um you know it scored well it was a little hidden gem scored well from cyber connect too actually y'all know them um and uh so i drafted the second one or uh no this was a bit uh, i bid on the second one because i thought well it's safe we know what this is probably not much is going to change only those types of outlets that review these types of games will review it it'll score five right here's the thing they released it the same day as zelda mm-hmm. also the developer publisher did not send out review codes. Also, the sites that cover this type of game said, hey, we would like reviewers. a review code, and they didn't respond to these people. <laughs> so I don't know why they wanted to send this game to die, but they certainly did, and there are no rev- there's not even an open critic page for this game. This is there's not even critic. a review on Metacritic. The, no, there is a review on. No, there's Metacritic. not. I just looked there at it. Is you liar? Stop lying to people. Um, Noisy Pixel reviewed it. They gave it an eight point five, but it doesn't matter because there's no open critic page yet, and they're not a top critic anyways. Which, by the way, I don't know if I ranted about this. Op- open critic is sort of a bad critic site. <laughs> they're really, they're pretty bad, uh, and the way they 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 only t- uh, t- uh, calculate scores based on top critics. And like their lists for top critics are like is like super dated, like very dated. And I would say like Noisy Pixel is like one of the like the review sites out there that pretty much reviews like most things, even like really obscure games. I mean, granted, a lot of those are focused like on Japanese style games, but like they review games that like most people don't, and they do video reviews for all of their reviews. If anyone should be a top critic, it should be no- Noisy Pixel, and maybe not. I don't know, Total Biscuit, which is a top critic. uh, Really? Yeah, or like Jimquisition, which I don't think, you know. He doesn't like review stuff anymore. No, not for years and years and years. Yeah. They don't review stuff anymore. They don't. Um, And And it's just crazy. Total Biscuit passed away, so like. Yeah, a while ago. 
yeah years ago <laughs> what i'm saying is like they seem a little out of touch and not really like updating the list even though that's what determines the scores so like the whole thing seems a little silly and frustrating at times so but you know it's a learning experience and now i know probably not to draft a game that has a chance to like not get a ton of reviews because before you know i just looked at oh the first one it, it scored I, I didn't know at the time that it was only top critics so I didn't expect to run into the situation. Obviously, War Tales kind of came through, but I, I knew that was a game. That was a game a lot of people were playing. Like it, that game has a fuck ton of like players worldwide. Uh, Fuga does not. So I'm thinking that this might turn into be turn out to be like a like a no ship for me, like a zero points or which this which is sucks. what you get. I get. What do you mean? Yeah, this is what you get for talking mad shit. That's all I'm saying. Damn. What are you talking, shit, Nick? What are you talking about? Of justice. I'm just the one who says, uh, who was the community member who said, um, the loser of Fantasy Critic has to play Redfall on stream for a few you hours? You said that. You no, said I that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that, you fucking yes, liar. Yes, you did. You I made was, that I was in the room. On the po- I was reciting a joke made by a community member but that was a brilliant well, joke and i'm I don't sorry want to for you to list your it. sources on the on the audio podcast where i listened to I it did, i did i <laughs> did you stole a joke if we say something that someone says in chat we usually no it, it wasn't it wasn't name. even in chat i was attributing it specifically even on the podcast to a community member um, um and it was a brilliant joke yeah this i would is love probably. to take credit for it but Yes, the loser might have to play right. Can we play. talk about that for a second then? Since now we're recording, I can say this shit on the air because I feel like I, ha- I like I, 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 about I, Redfall? No, 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 I'm not talking about Redfall. I don't give a shit oh. about Redfall. Red, no. Redfall obviously was a huge disaster and a huge surprise, I think, for everybody, not just me. Like, never in a million years did I think Arcane would deliver such a fucking steaming shit like this. Like, this is... I don't. I don't want to talk about Redfall. I want to talk about the fact that, like, I'm in a very different position than everybody else on this league because of the way my list was constructed. And here's crispy. Me, 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 me. See this? <laughs> everybody, everybody on this league has has at this point has probably more than half of their list. Not Carlos. Is like, she only has three games, except for Carlos. Maybe I mean, we don't hear. Points. We don't hear a ton from Carlos. And you know what? Like, that makes sense. Carlos doesn't have half of his list out. He's sitting at 35 points right now. Um, he has the same amount of games as you. I know, but it'll, the games on my list that have come out, uh, one was a counter pick, so I lost points there. Uh, Good counter Redfall, pick. Red, Redfall was a huge fucking surprise. So yes, of course, I'm, I'm hugely disappointed that that, that that fucked me over as bad as it did. In fact, now it's down in the 50s. I'm sitting at negative four points now. Um, but like most of my list is not even out and, uh, Mm. you know, before, between now and the end of the year, a lot of stuff is going to transpire on my list. So like, who the fuck knows where I'm going to end up? I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to, you know, I don't think I'm coming for Nolan or anything, but like, I still think that number two spot on this list is anybody's game. Not saying nobody, number two doesn't get anything. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately because we didn't i we don't didn't even plan. think there's much pride in number two you know oh, even, fuck even even if we try to like steer that that narrative into like number two mattering it doesn't really matter it, it's still number two still gives number one fifty bucks well we didn't <laughs> we, we didn't we didn't and like you said this is this is our first year doing this this is very much learning how to do this. You did say it last week, though. It kind of sucks. That, like, like nobody wants it to, to go this way because it's just going yeah, no, right. to be the Nolan meme. Yeah, no, you're right. I want to for sure. And, you and, know, I, maybe and I think it will be. I think it will be. My my only point is that, like, you know, most of my list, like 80% of my list is not even out yet. And mm-hmm. th- the games that I'm confident that are coming out this year, I'm pretty confident in. Redfall was the one on my list where I was, like, really teetering on Wait. You were confident about Redfall. You weren't confident about Suicide Squad. No, no, I wasn't confident about either one. I tried. I actually tried to get Crispy to take Redfall. I was very nervous about having either one of those games on my list. You tried to fuck me. I did 
I mean, but I it wasn't was inter- who fucked him. But, but here's the thing, Crispy. When I when I was trying to quote unquote fuck you by giving you Redfall, it was more like I'm gonna give him a game that's gonna only pull him like two or three points. I didn't think if I gave it to you, you were you would suddenly lose like twelve points or yeah. whatever. Nic- uh, Nicholas, yeah. you tried to outfox a fox, and like, like, you got foxed. The, so the, the nightmare, the worst case scenario in our heads at the time was that like, oh, Redfall might be like a low seventies game. Yes. Yes. You know, like it. This, I don't it, think there are any more like that on my list. No one on the planet, not even, you know, uh, Phil Spencer's, you know, uh, it, it, you know, inside a consultant review team or whatever expected this. Everyone. Expected There's only this. one other game on my list oh, that, that if it comes out, I am maybe a little nervous about, but only because I think it's not going to pull massive points or like. Let you no. say it like like it, it, it. Here's the thing: everyone yeah. is so weirdly like secretive, and like like people th- have have accused me of like, you know, like talking. Like I've I've been I've been pretty like I've not been deceptive. I've been pretty honest about my opinions about people's games, and I'm not when I say like, oh, that was a bad pick, or oh, your your list is not doing great right now or you're probably not going to win this i'm not trying to be mean i'm just literally calling how i see it and i'm not always going to be right there have been overperformers. there have been underperformers. i didn't think zelda was going to be a 97 on metacritic i was thinking 94 95 at best but of course zelda overperforms the one game we really didn't need to overperform i mean christ but you know, you uh, had the, you lucked out with Hogwarts Legacy. I don't think anybody expected it to score. I mean, when highs you think about it, guys, when you think about it, I know Nolan's list is really strong, but he did like when you when you look at his thirty what what is it what is it like thirty seven points or 34 something points for Zelda thirty four points for Zelda in one take slot. fourteen points of those away from for Hogwarts man he got twenty yeah. points on Zelda yeah no twenty again, points rough it's but never like been <laughs> about Zelda it's always been about Zelda. And the rest of his I list. I know. I know. Everything else that he's picked has hit pretty well. The yeah. important yeah. thing here you know is that we really need Space Marine 2 to do really well. Okay, it's that's what I was t- gonna come It's out. time! It it's is time! time. For the good Space Marine game! People want it! The people are ready! It's time! Oh, I was laughing so hard listening to Crispy's go off about space marine from last week we'll oh see. my god we'll see well we're gonna we'll do a mastering but we got there's other like current news to talk about other l's yes. that happened this week okay why don't you why don't you finish rattling off the l's and then we'll, well talk about this, more I'll let chris davis take this one away yeah uh so i was very confident based on early uh previews that had done it been done at a very uh major press event for lego 2k drive uh, the review, the previews I was seeing were very positive. Uh, people were excited about it. And I mean, Dude. I was kind of hyped to play it myself. So uh, wild. and it turns out it's currently a 72 on open critic. Uh, and from what I've been reading other reviews, uh, it's a kid's game that for kids plays really well, but it is heavily monetized. And that's been really which is weird. Mean. If it's for kids, no, it's not. Oh, well, that's, that's not, not weird. weird. No, that's, that's that's where they want the monetization. That's yeah, the monetization yeah. Oh, what, Dude, uh, put the credit there... card on the machine and let the kids take control. I mean, yeah, I, I, I like, think this one is really is exactly. That. I think this one's really interesting because, um, I mean, I kind of, I kind of, you know, when Chris Davis was talking about the re- early reviews for this game. I kind of was looking at it and was and I think I even put a bid in for it, yeah. but missed out on it. Um, but I was looking at all those same reviews that you were talking about, Chris, and like people were really into it. Yeah. With, like, Maybe. was there discussion of like this monetization thing going on? There was in no mention reviews? at all of monetization. In the is that what killed it? Like, is that what brought it down? Because otherwise it feels like what the fuck was everybody talking about? That is the consistent <laughs> mainline detraction on it. Yeah. Davis saw Forza Horizon when he looked at that thing. And let me say that's no, but he's little... not the only one. Like a lot of people, a lot of those reviews were talking about it I like that. Some of those previews, and they were saying they, they were saying it's helpful. like the Forza Horizon of cart games. Like what? Like you know? Like I watched also, the reviews. I there was I buzz. Watched, there was in buzz. Its structure. It was Forza Horizon, not in its polish or its amb- ambition. No. 
like but I, people well, I already the give videos. those lego games footage, and the shit look jank like like the fact yeah. when you as soon as you your wheels touch off road like on a turn it just immediately transforms into your your off road vehicle and then yeah. you, you, the wheel goes back onto the road and it tra- there's barely even a, there's not even a transform animation it looked jank whatever dude I'm okay sorry, first, first of all so, like the, the, the double tragedy is that he spent 20 bucks on that which you know, it did look kind of hype. People were saying who had played it, it said that it was hyped. And those Wait Lego games, those Lego games always get way more latitude than they deserve. People yeah. actually with a straight face sit there and tell me that they it's like playing fucking DC fucking villains two or whatever, or or Lego the Avenger. Like those they're fucking kids games. They're not fun. I mean they're kind of fun, but they're not they're that fun. Games. Guys, like, since for a while they've been there are important lessons to be learned here because this isn't just two Lego 2K Drive. Like Redfall previews were very positive. Maybe a little yeah, divisive. I tried to a pick little that divisive. apart on the podcast. But dude, there was there was plenty of positive, but there was certainly nothing that would suggest that it was that would be scoring in the fucking fifties. Like, I will say, no, I think some of it who is listens to like podcast denial. discussions about some of these events. I listen to four like, podcasts all about Redfall. Videos. Versus the thing you always got to be careful with previews. Previews are always way more positive. That's, that's what I'm. That's literally what I'm trying to say here about important lessons to be learned. Yeah. I'm not going to base any future bids on preview coverage. Period. Yeah, I'm going it's... to. I'm going to base it on historic, like developer history, franchise history, and my own gut. Um, because I. I that is weird. I, I mean, that's so weird. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like there's more of that now, right? Look, mm-hmm. like there's more of a symbiosis between the print media about games and like. Let me, let me tell you why I was always I didn't even throw a buck towards Lego 2K Drive. A lot of that hype, I think, came out of the fact that one day we didn't know it existed, and two day and on day two there were produced preview videos. Sure. There is some like this came out of nowhere hype. And combined with the fact that it's a preview and not like a final code or anything, like that stuff is, trends way more positive than it necessarily. Manufactured hype. I mean, yeah, that the when publisher you... wins. This is what they wanted because mm. the fucking the media they always do this shit. Fucking mm. journos. Okay, we need to move on. Lego two K two K Drive. Any other L's you wanted to bring to the? You well, I guess there's an L for crispy. I guess that's the last one. We oh, talk whatever. About. That that's not an L. That's a that's a fuck you from God. Like, like, <laughs> no. like the <laughs> wait, what? Which game are we talking about? Chris Davis. We're talking about look, Mortal Kombat. Look, oh. look, my opinion has not <laughs> never been that in Mortal Kombat wasn't. I mean, it wasn't a bad pick necessarily. I say something since it, I wasn't on the podcast last week and y'all talked a lot about this last week. And it, a lot yeah, of what y'all talked yeah. about last week was like based off of the information that was that was Available leaked or rumored, but it was basically just confirmed today. It was right, a we poorly, got the trailer. Yes, oh, was Mortal well, Kombat one. The, the teaser had come out. Like the teaser it was had come basically out. confirmed. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, the, Mortal Kombat the, was a poorly kept secret for a very long time. That's why it's not a, tr- a like an awful, awful draft pick. It was always the third round that we thought was insane because no one was ever going to draft that. There was no competition to draft it. But it's out. It happened. I'm glad because you know we it was we, we did clown on them pretty hard early on. It was a hell of a, it was a hell of a gamble, and that's that's what makes this whole thing fun. Uh, it was when shit like this happens, <laughs> shit like this happens. But um, but the trailer that they dropped today for Mortal Kombat one, uh, because there was some, there there's been some debate about you know is it Mortal Kombat twelve? Is it a reboot? Blah 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 blah. And it literally is a sequel to Mortal Kombat eleven because. Luke but Hang Luke after- Kang restarted the universe, so technically it's a reboot. So it's Mortal Kombat One, okay? Uh, my I rest my case. He, re- like, he rebooted Mortal Kombat. the universe following the events of Mortal Kombat Eleven. I'm sorry, are you saying that Fire God Luke Kang has no jurisdiction over this fucking video <laughs> game draft? Because I beg to differ. Okay. <laughs> uh, I just thought it was like, wow, what a fucking firestorm of events. It's beautiful. It's it's just a beautiful thing. Um, I hate it. I, the the galling <laughs> thing too is that like it actually looks kind of cool. It does. Look uh, cool. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Was there just the cinematic trailer? So yeah. yeah. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like you know, it's a cinema. It was a cinematic trailer, but like 
these days, like I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if that wasn't like an engine. I don't oh, fucking shit. know. Yeah, it's it's current gen only. I guess cinematic. <laughs> what the are you thing is, about? I want to see the gameplay because Nether Realms animations are always kind of like goofy. Assy. So so we, we, I, I kind of want to see if they've made any advances in terms of that tech, but you know. God, I hope yeah. not. Like, what's the point? <laughs> Uh, no, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Brad here. I, I'm hoping that they improve. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean they're fun games for sure, but they're, they're, they're crouching, the crouching medium kick or whatever is famous. Okay, like, right okay, on. hang on. We're, they we're haven't repeating the same conversation from last week at this point. They haven't actually said that it's a fighting game yet, though. Okay. That's true. He's right. He's right. It's it could true. Be a oh, I don't know. I'm gonna it says but, it's like, cling on to that. Cling on to that. A, cine- a cinematic uh, campaign for the story. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, mm-hmm. so I think uh, mm-hmm. it doesn't mm-hmm. really matter what your argument is here, Crispy, because open <laughs> critics, open critics de- I, definition. I, I uh, should uh, test. No, open no, no. Critics Their definition final word of, was a super, super good point. Open critics definition of Mortal Kombat 12 of this unannounced Mortal Kombat title was always Nether Realms next Mortal Kombat no, it wasn't. game. Whether... No, it wasn't. Yeah, sure the, it we, was. We got clarification last week. Um, it it when, was drafted when, when as Mortal, Mortal Kombat 12. Drafted, 12 it, it was called Mortal Kombat 12. No, it, unannounced. unannounced. Yes, it was. No, I get that. But my point is, if Nether Realm announced a Mortal Kombat game that wasn't a traditional Mortal Kombat game, no, but it was like a God. side-scrolling oh, beat-em-up yeah. or something like that, they would still... This this would still fall into that same slot because it is Nether Realms next Mortal Kombat game. Oh, I don't so think I don't so. think it matters uh, if it was twelve uh, or one or fifteen or whatever the fuck. Sure. If, if it wasn't never a re- traditional fighting yeah. game, I don't think it would have yeah. counted. And honestly, but, but it, Nick, the, the we final... already litigated this last week. Yeah, like yeah, we already sure. we already figured this no, all I didn't out. Get to be- I didn't I get, get to be a part of it. No, because you chose to go on vacation. But, yeah, but <laughs> look what it got me. The final word from those deliberations on what they were going to do on Open Critic or on Fantasy Critic was like a super fucking good point. We've been looking at it from the angle as Chris Davis. What did he draft? What did he draft? 99% of the leagues and people that have Mortal Kombat on their list just bid on it the week it was announced in their earnings, earnings call as Mortal Kombat 12. To, to like say that this game doesn't count when 99% of the people bid on it after that information got out would be fucking insane. It would be insane. Uh, I don't know. They could all be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. So real quick, before we move on from Mortal Kombat, now that we've seen a trailer for it, is there what else? Do, is there anything else we want to say about it? Like, like, it is a cinematic trailer. There's not a lot to open There's here. not much to say. It's a story Jump reboot. Back. I mean, I hope. Oh, uh, Scorpion and Sub-Zero are friends now, and that's cool. Shatana, Melina... Uh, they Kang, they they got Jean Claude Van Damme to be Johnny Cage. What? Wow. Is that what? right? That's yes, right. that is are the you, thing no, that they're no, no, no. gonna announce today. That's not right. They're not gonna have Ronda Rousey What's back, this? are they? You know who wasn't in Mortal Kombat One? Melina. This this is not a remake of the first game. Okay. Okay. Well, we don't know that this is a fighting game. So <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> so, sorry. Hold on a fucking. <laughs> Yeah. Hold Look it up. Jean Claude Van Damme will be featured as Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat One. Like his likeness? Like his like old man? Like Johnny Cage? I don't know is the thing. Where are you I, seeing I this, Chris Davis? Google right. it. Jean Claude Van Damme Mortal Kombat. You can't Google trust that. Trust those Google art articles okay, that pop all, up on your Google search. Thing. I don't want to Google Mortal Kombat and Jean Claude Van Damme because like that's just like begging for like misinformation. I want to find. I want to see. Okay, like, fine. Here, here's the Polygon article. There but you he go. played Guile <laughs> in the Street Fighter movie. <laughs> it's blasphemous. <laughs> okay, there's a Polygon evidently article. The, evidently, the story goes that. Uh, Midway oh, years so back, had wanted to get uh, Jean Claude Van Damme into more, the original Mortal Kombat game. They had originally been pitching him like a digitized blood sport game. It's a character they... skin. God damn it! It's a it's a swappable character skin. You, for, you, need, for you need to follow on Twitter. Page. What is it? The the don't the didn't click or one hundred and ten dollars clickbait. Or what is the the Twitter thing that just sums up like the oh whole yeah yeah I know what you mean. <laughs> it's a, it's a it's a swappable skin for the character yeah it's, it's a likeness he's in the game then 
He doesn't have to voice the, the character. He doesn't have to do motion capture. News. The man can't Can do motion capture. He's like, like 60 something. Unambitious, like, this is not an exciting, like, direction to take Mortal Kombat. They've already rebooted this universe okay. many times. Brad, and, and, and you, you yeah. know what I would have liked for them to do? Yeah, bring this back, game... Bring back FMV, dude. How cool yeah. would that have been if, like, the characters were just full motion video, like sprites, like they were in the original? That would be sick look they, they, they tried to do that they couldn't get uh, the the green light on that um, well and here's the thing too like this game is coming name? out chris davis, name your sources i think chris davis is fake news here like it doesn't no, this is, this it, is it literally, literally doesn't, doesn't for matter. years this is a story that, go, that has gone around for years that ed boone and nether realm tried to get permission from wb to get funding to do a pseudo remake of the Mortal, original Mortal Kombat trilogy, which is the updated sprites and, and a remaster treatment. But that's oh, not that's, the same thing that we just said. Talked... <laughs> He's talking about like making a whole new game with where, where the FMV sprite character what? work is like the inspiration, not not revamping the original. Oh, sprite. I yeah, think but... you guys are really getting in the weeds here, and that doesn't matter. What <laughs> does matter is that this game still could suck <laughs> and that would be cool wow for me <laughs> you, know, you know what's not going to be cool for you also is that also that got announced this week uh the expanse a telltale series comes out oh, july 27th it's definitely yeah, gonna suck one, that's definitely though. gonna be bad that's not gonna that's not gonna review well deck nine no, does I'm not miss it's zeros zeros all around buddy the Guys, creators of life is strange nine. colors is if they putting hit out an expanse more game. than they wouldn't be deck nine, right? <laughs> I don't know. It is about 30 minutes into our podcast, or 30 minutes. We still have Zelda to talk about. We have yeah. to get through. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk, well, you know, obviously we'll talk more about Mortal Kombat when we know more. But, I would be, oh, okay, okay, final word. I would say that, of course, Chris, Crispy, word. I'd be crossing my fingers that they, like, fuck it up with, like, bad monetization schemes. Because, you know what? It's that's, WB! They gotta do it! It'll be that's great! The, that's the reality in, in our mm. industry. Oh, so. come on, microtransactions. <laughs> Look, uh, the, the, the regular edition that comes with the Battle Pass is already $110. Ooh, ooh off to a good start. Here we go! <laughs> yeah. Maybe they'll put Ronda Rousey back in the game, and then we can have a conversation about that again. Like, ooh, ooh, ooh this will be great! Uh, <laughs> So, oh yeah, Sweet. you know what? Fine. Fuck you. Final word. I want to say points. I don't agree with Brad about this not being an interesting direct. I mean, because it's like I don't think there's many. I mean, honestly, if it were me, I would just maybe say tr do something else entirely because Mortal Kombat is I feel like has been done. But it's also like it's one of those, you know, it's a famed fighting series like Street Fighter, like Tekken. It's just right. if, they, if you say it for Mortal Kombat, you can say it for the other ones. Yeah, well, so I'm not, not going to make sure another crossover. I'm not going to make new. That a new direction. They are doing something totally different. Sub Zero and Scorpion are friends now. They've been friends before. Yeah, they they've been are friends before. officially friends in Mortal Kombat One, which what I I'm think saying. means that Sub Zero is the original Sub Zero, not the Sub Zero who was friends with Scorpion. And Scorpion's still alive, I think. I think I don't I'm know. getting sicker being on this podcast. It looks like, crazy. Sub Zero is the skeleton man. Uh, it's gonna be a bad video game. I'm gonna win lots of points on that counter pick. Super excited about it. <laughs> Stick around for more coverage of that. Hey guys, you've been playing that new Legend of Zelda? No, wait, we have one more thing. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, what? Yeah, we do. <laughs> so last, so yesterday, Sony announced that their big showcase is next week. Oh on shit! Fucking Wednesday. Their E3 week? showcase is next God. Wednesday. It's already almost June. Christ. Do we know believe, what? But they're that... not even waiting for June. They're just doing it in May. Fuck it. They're doing an hour long presentation next not a week. Thing. Who gives a shit when they do it? I, know. I mean, that's the thing. I know. Yeah. My point is, we were all sitting here waiting for June. They're like, fuck it. We're doing May. So um, next Wednesday is, is Sony's big thing. I just I just want some quick thoughts on like, what do you think is going to It's going to be an hour long. It's going to have. Is dog we don't know. Two. We don't, they haven't confirmed anything. I am almost positive Spider-Man 2 is going to be like the Sick. front and center. Like, this is their main thing. Sure, I hope it's exciting. They're obviously um, going to be announcing Bloodborne 2 and the <laughs> Monster Hunter World sequel that we've all been waiting for. Dragon's Dogma 2. Dragon's Dogma 2. Y'all's legitimate... Deep Down is back! Thoughts on, one, Last of Us multiplayer game. You think we're going to see it? 
Sure. Mm, maybe. Sure you know what I think? An answer, you know what I think though? Sure. I saw them tweeting a lot about that access controller. I bet there's going to be a lot about that. Yeah. Who's going to who here's the thing. Do you, do you think the Last of Us multiplayer game if it gets a a date for this year, do you think that's a juicy bid? Yes, absolutely. Think so? You think so? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. fucking lootly. Um, yeah. I'm looking yeah. to spend some money next week. I've been sitting on uh, a pile of cash. I know. I'm actually really excited to see what they're going to do to convince me that video games aren't dead. Uh, <laughs> because oh, yeah. I played Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and I don't know. I think that's it, boys. Pack it in. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, what are you going to make now? Nothing that's better. Uh, okay. I see what you're trying to do, Crispy. Just, just hold it no, in for just a few more minutes. No, I'm just, I'm just saying. Um. Uh, also, saying. what do you think? Astrobot. They said PSVR games are going to be there. You think we're going to get an Astrobot oh, announcement? Dude, that's insane. Are they really still like investing in PSVR? Yeah, they are. They yes. have to. They have to. They, they have to. I Otherwise, thought that was like and the other dead. Sue them. I'm not they at this point they need a Half Life Alex size announcement for the PSVR 2 to get people. How about, how about just Half Life Alex? How about just, just that? That'd be a start. Yeah, that'd be crazy. Yeah. I'd put play, that I'm out. Really for that. I'm blown away that it's not already available. Like I figured that would have been a launch title for this thing. It would have been yeah, perfect for it. it um, I don't know. I'm not. Are you asking me if I'm excited about PSVR 2? No, no, no. I'm asking if you think. If you think Ast Astrobot 2 is... Sorry, I got a cough. He's got the COVID. Astrobot 2 or 3? Or, I mean, Astrobots? You mean Rescue Mission 2? That's the one. Yeah, Maybe. that's what I meant. Maybe. Well, it could be a non-VR. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know. That, that's like the only... I mean, that studio is still... Do there, you think... So. I mean, like, like... That franchise in particular is one that they've kind of like wanted to make a PlayStation mascot, it seems like. Yeah. Do you think that they might try to transition that away from just being like a VR title to be like, hey, we're just making a full blown platformer with Astro No, come. I know. There was that like little like demo one. No, it wasn't a demo. That was a game. Yeah. You're talking about the yeah. one with, that came out with the PS5? Yeah, yes. right. I mean, it's a full. It's a it's a game, but like what Crispy's saying oh, is I never like played it. game. I thought it was like a demo. I thought it was some oh, tech it's demo. Good. It's a game. It's a video. Wait, game. Uh, wait a second. Back the fuck up, Crispy. You have a PS5 sitting in your house right now, and you haven't played Astrobot. Oh, dude, it's like a six-hour game or something. It's a video. Yeah, game. Oh, okay. It's, it's, but that's it's like... hefty and it's good. Well, how long do you want? Well, Astrobot I'm thinking. I'm thinking Mario 64, but it's Astrobot. It's that good. Cool. It's a good video game. I don't know, but but I am with Crispy here because like, you know, as much as I would like them to do a, a rescue mission two with PSVR two, I would be just as happy if they just announced a full blown PS five platformer like full length giant scope title with Astrobot. Like that would be amazing, um, because th that that d the demo on or whatever the fuck it is on, it's not a demo. I know. It's sorry, it's just it was a pack -in. Pack -in. the pack in was so fucking good. And like, yeah, it was. It, it has it has the potential to be like the Mario of PlayStation. It's, it's still the best implementation of the PS5 controller tech by far. It's a really, yes. really and not cool... only not only that, but like when you think about it, just from like a mascot like design standpoint, like Astrobot's fucking adorable. He's like, yeah. it's like. It's a no. It seems like it a just no released like a plush or something. We probably will see Astrobot at this thing, but we've been talking too long about Astrobot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, if, if nobody has anything else interesting to predict, as, far, as I, my as well. my, my prediction, interesting? my interesting prediction. I swear to God, I I'm just gonna say it. I don't know if this is actually gonna happen, but I'm gonna say it just in case it does happen, and then I can be like, "Haha, told you so." Thirty minutes of this hour long presentation is gonna be on that new controller hardware. Wait. Oh, I don't think they'll do that much. I think they'll they'll, they'll feature which quite controller a bit. hardware. The, the Access Two or Access controller, the one yeah, that's like a completely moddable, like like it's for like people with disabilities, but it, it oh, right. it's like a completely like yeah yeah it has like a stick and like moddable buttons and you can assign like it looks crazy. It looks complicated and. It looks like something they could easily spend thirty minutes talking about trying to sell. But I don't think they're. The I don't. Remote but the, 
this is supposed to be their E3 showcase. Like, this is not, they're not going to spend 30 minutes talking about any piece of any any controller. Dude, I don't know. I I bet. I mean, also, as as cynical as this statement is, like, today is Global Accessibility Awareness Day. So, like, this was marketing points for Sony today. I I don't know if they really are gonna. Oh yeah, they the actually. Down I, mean, I can see them. Hi- I can see them highlight it, but formerly yeah, Project Leonardo. Briefly. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, guys. We've been talking Vita about. Too. We've been talking about waiting. As far as the fantasy critic goes, we've been talking about waiting for the summer because that's when all of the, the things are going to start popping off, right? This is the first one yeah. where there's going to be announcements. We haven't been waiting that that much Nick. now if you want to talk about like a a 20 minute preview of an upcoming product that product is spider-man 2 yes i mean the last 15 to 20 minutes of that show will absolutely be all about spider-man 2 (laughs) next next wednesday when you guys are all gone man that was lame they just talked about that fucking controller for 30 minutes Okay. This guy. I don't right think here. Crispy's right, but this I don't, guy also was don't correct. Think that Nick is right. I don't think you could show twenty minutes of Spider Man and not have people go, "Okay, we get it. We got it at minute seven. It's a Spider Man game." Brad, I don't. I, I don't. I, I think, think you either. underestimate Spider Man fans. I, I think you are. You you are. Too, you're a negative Nancy I don't about underestimate it. The fans. I underestimate the game. Whatever. Whatever. We need. We, I guess we need to move on. Um, I'm I'm excited and. It, we all were all excited for Dragon's Dogma 2, Monster Hunter Dude, World 2. Dragon's Dogma, all those games the, that you're dude, talking about, those shit. third party, those third a third party shit, that's gonna be Summer Game Fest stuff. I'm almost positive. Well, they said there's gonna be big third party stuff there. Yeah. Like we're probably Summer Game Fest. We're gonna see some Square Enix no, stuff. At the Sony showcase. Uh-oh. There's gonna be third We're probably stuff. gonna get uh the reveal of uh or more gameplay of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, right, Rebirth, which in which case they will tell us a release window, and I can either drop it or get excited. I <laughs> would not put it past for sixteen. I I w- well yeah they'll do they'll do some like uh, like a final trailer for sixteen, and probably some like extra marketing tie in for that. But I would not put it past them for us to finally see what this Final Fantasy Tactics uh, title is. You know what, y'all just reminded me of something, and we we need to move on. But I think we set up the uh, predictions betting pool thing. You know how we, how I ripped off a fantasy critic from watching easy allies. They do betting predictions. That's like super cool and exciting too. I'm going to try to set that up before the Sony thing next week. And kind of, that's how we handle our, we will call it like our summer showcase. Nobody, nobody go tell easy allies that we're, (laughs) I don't care. Tell them Uh, there's, we'll call it like our, our, our summer showcase, like, you know, predictions or whatever, because the way they do it is like super cool. That's and then we Wednesday, can like Wednesday, Brad. Hmm? It's on Wednesday. Okay. We record podcasts on Thursday. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, no, but it, uh, oof. we have to do it this weekend. Fuck. Yeah. That's not going to work. Shit. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure it, it out. It doesn't necessarily have to be before the Sony thing, but Ram, it really should have been. Mm. Mm. All right. Should we take a we'll break st- before we talk about Zelda or should we no, just-, let's just go? Go to Tsushima too. Anyway, go ahead. Could be. It could that could happen, actually. Yeah, no, like that's super realistic. All right. Um and 30 minutes of access. Oh, control. also, and I think I think Sony might be where I get some Silent Hill 2, maybe a, with maybe a release window, so I can either drop or keep that as well. <laughs> um but anyways, let's uh let's move on over to the, the game that we're here we're really all here to talk about. Of course, uh, okay. this is our first episode in a post Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom world. Wow. Um, obviously, we're going to be talking about this game off and on for weeks, <laughs> mm. I'm sure. Um, yeah. I don't know where maybe for starters, I, I didn't even get to start the game until yesterday. So I'm probably I would imagine pretty far behind you guys. The, game the day it came out. Right. So y'all I still haven't I, seen that much. I just got the glider right before the podcast. Whoa! Oh, wow. Whoa! Wow. Okay. Wow! Oh, yeah. Wow! Okay. Well, Great maybe. I, okay. I thought it was going to be maybe a little bit of an uneven playing field here, but it sounds like we're kind of all. Um, well, I don't know. The Chris's are probably pretty far. Can I? Can I say like? Considering quickly, he's playing it right now. Before we start talking playing, about all playing. the cool things we've seen and done in the I game, I will say. I guess this was going to be my four-player minute, but it doesn't make sense at the end. I've been like kind of a 
I've been more afraid of spoilers with this game than I ever have of any like story spoil. You know how people are usually like, oh, story right. spoilers, they're going to ruin the game. That do- I mean, as someone who doesn't care too much about stories in most traditional video games, that's never been what as if I've been afraid of in terms of spoilers. But this game, act- spoilers actually scare me. And people have been posting about this game all over, little clips, little gifts, and like, just the knowledge of being able to do some of the things you can do in this game, I think can really ruin it for me. And I'm, I'm afraid of seeing something that I can't unsee. And I saw something like that yesterday and I'm like, I could just do that to what get was it? there anytime I want. That's bullshit. Like it just breaks like half the puzzles I've encountered and I don't want to see any more of that shit. So like, I'm afraid of mechanic spoilers, like, like, uh, you know, like hacks like not hacks um you know like little uh, work workarounds and loopholes and like little things you can do in terms of the mechanics that break a lot of the puzzle design even the exploration design and right and i i encourage y'all to talk about the game but maybe not go into details about some of the crazy shit you've seen out there because i kind of don't i think there will be time for that stuff much later when we've all played most of this game yes yes but it's still um in fact i would this is one of those this is one of the few games where i think it would be great after we've all finished it to do it like a, it's exciting a, to see that stuff cast. but a lo- I, I started seeing a lot of the crazy stuff for breath of the wild like after i like was binging like you know weeks later we started to see the really crazy stuff and i, I wasn't even really interested in recreating oh. that stuff but this game is more about those systems and more about those mechanics and chris, more about like tooling with those systems that i really Davis, don't want to see that what wrong slide uh oh uh, you put the wrong title <laughs> on the game no. sorry ah, it's okay no, it's okay what a boner Jedi, you're, right brad you're absolutely right um and, and i will say this um as far as my footage goes here it, i will say i i recorded this footage this afternoon uh it's about 30 minutes and it's all it's pure just like exploration and gameplay stuff um but like nothing that i do and i do a lot i i, I was surprised but when it was all said and done how much i managed to like squeeze in to that this one 30 minute chunk of gameplay, but nothing that I do in this footage, I think is anything that we, that you haven't already seen in like marketing and stuff. So like, I, I, I think I managed to squeeze in all of the major powers that they kind of give you at, at the forefront of the game. Um, but in their like kind of like most basic, uh, uses in this footage, but so I don't think uh, you need to worry about watching my footage. Um, can I, up, crispy? can I ask what it was you saw that? No, I don't want to talk about it. I, I don't want to tell you. I don't want to tell anyone. Why? Oh, no, no, no. First of all, that's a trap. What Crispy just said is a trap because Crispy is going to go into one of his tirades about he doesn't he about spoilers. That no, he always goes no, into no, no, like, no, no. That's not it's not a tirade spoiler. about spoiler. Like, I mean, whatever it is you saw, I feel like I've probably already you, seen. You, you first of all, second of all, second of all, like. Can we all just take a minute to appreciate no what way I'm just that, here? There's no way that it could be something so complicated that or i don't know no, no, no. All, it was definitely what like i'm trying a, to what i'm trying to relate do that what i'm trying to what i'm trying footage. to relate yeah dude no this is baby shit i don't care no, no, i know i like what I just, i'm trying to relate thought... is that like i can't like i have not found i don't know man like i've seen people doing some really weird stuff and i've seen people doing some really like crazy out of the box things and i've kind of i don't know janked my way around problems in this game but in not in ways that felt like i don't know like i i'm really struggling with your anxiety about that because because i don't don't think you don't don't, have to be on the same page as me no i know but like i i think one of the strengths of this game is that like it is very cognizant of how much power it's handing. And it's that. it's aware of that and kind of designed around that. Yeah, or when 100%. it's not necessarily designed around that, it's still like super rewarding. And I, I like the only thing I've encountered in this game that I'm like, well, I'm not going to do that because I think that breaks the game is item duping, which you can yeah. still do and is actually like super easy um, item. But I mean, that's a straight up exploit, right? 
Yes. Using any of the items that they've given you I'm to do anything. I'm saying I want these aha moments for myself. That's I, all. I guess, yeah. Yeah, okay, so, sure. And I don't so, want to break uh, the puzzle uh, design. It's like playing Scribble Knots knowing that you can break every puzzle if you just type jetpack. And I don't want to like restrict myself fumbling oh, with shit for like think. half an hour when I know I could make this way easier if I did the thing I saw on. TikTok. I just don't think there's anything in the game that is that much of a silver bullet. I don't, not what I saw. I mean, that's why right. I wanted to ask you what it was so we could talk about it, but no, okay, fine. We're not going to have the that thing. conversation. Maybe if you want to have that conversation, have it in Discord. And <laughs> I guess. I, I, I think, yeah, I don't know. Like, I... <laughs> I am I I have played many hours since this came out and the one thing that keeps surprising me is how much smarter the people who made this game are than me <laughs> like how robust it is like how robust yeah. the systems are and how I well they play together and like I can't like yeah I don't know okay this is bad this is a bad conversation wait, 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 wait. Uh, let me no, no. let me let me kind of like get at something that I think you're kind of touching on here because I've played about, I don't know, 10 to 12 hours of it so far. Um, and I know I'm still, in the grand scheme of things, pretty early. Because it took me five hours just to get off of the, like, tutorial island. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, to get, like, down to Hyrule. That's when it kind of opens up. Yeah. Um, but, like, what I think is really interesting about this game is, is, like, most Zelda games, you spend an entire game, you're exploring the world, and they're giving you these powers and these items and these abilities and whatnot little by little and you're getting more and more powerful this game obviously takes a very different approach which i think is what makes it unique in that right out of the gate they give you like 60 percent of like the major powers or abilities and and you have access to those free range access to those for the Just rest like of the, the first game. game and let me say yeah. like they are far more interesting in this game than they were in they're the first insane game. i mean i'm gonna be honest like, the power set that they gave you and the the amount of latitude they give you in this world it's like, insane it's crazy it's insane. it, it it's isn't right insane. it isn't moral i don't i don't feel good playing this game <laughs> like it's it's my, it's my roommate actually my roommate has spent two nights watching me play this game and like he just keeps saying the same thing over and over again he's like i cannot play this game like this game gives me anxiety, but I absolutely fucking love watching you play it. But he's like, I could never play this game. I can't even like think of how to do half the things that like it seems like you just have to do. You know, like you just kind of have to know how to like use the powers to manipulate items and gravity and like how to like combo them together. And like there's so many things that look like in any other game, they would be exploits. They would be bugs. They would be game breaking, you know? Yeah. But here it's like, like it's like, oh, oh, this chest. I couldn't have gotten here if I hadn't like, you know, I see. I now I don't now I'm afraid to like say anything. right? Because well, no, well, no, no, no. We've cooled the conversation a little bit. But uh, can, but can like, I, can I say like the one thing that that sort of keeps me from even doing some of the stuff that I did see and it's the, the thing that maybe gives me anxiety and it's again it's probably has to do with the fact that I'm not very far and I have a lack, lack of knowledge of the, like really the scope of everything but I see like cool stuff but to me those are still like limited resources so I'm fucking around less because I'm like I don't have a lot of I can pull out a glider and throw a fan on it or whatever but I only have like you know a few writers and a few fans and i don't know maybe you know 20 hours from now i'm not even going to be thinking about stuff in in that that way but right now i am and it means i'm fucking around with that the cooler stuff less which is you know this, this kind of gets at what i was talking about earlier i feel like that like that specific issue i definitely have struggled with but also i feel like it goes away really quickly. Um, like, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, there's... When I when I was saying... Um, yeah, I was being kind of, like, bitchy about it and, and was just trying to make a joke and wasn't really... Uh, I wasn't really expanding on what I meant, but earlier in Discord I said if you're still fighting people by, like, swinging a sword at them, like, you're a fucking chump. Like, you're a loser. <laughs> Which... All right. so because... Yeah, I don't know, it's man. Like, kind of what I wanted to what I wanted to touch on here, I even, because I, I know 
I don't but think that that is actually a, true, but I, I feel like the economy and like yeah. the value out of engaging with those systems is so huge. And like so much of the game is like funneling you towards that almost to where like, like, you know, in any other game, some guy just like whipping up a mech and like going around and destroying a bunch of goblins or whatever would be like, oh, look at this weird, quirky thing this guy like did that is unintended. You know, this is unintended play, but this guy kind of like made this game fun for himself. That is like kind of what you're just supposed to do in this game. Mm -hmm. Like, like you're supposed to make weird fucked up shit that breaks the game. And that's like, that is like the ludology of the game. That is what they want from you. That's what they're teaching you to do. That's what they expect you to do. And like, if you're running around with a shield and sword smacking things, like the game's gonna be like, okay, well, this is this is about as powerful as you're gonna get. Like, okay, so so my experience so far, because I am also seeing not a lot. I have kind of been trying to avoid seeing anything too crazy, but like I have of course caught wind of things and I've seen trailers and whatnot. So I've seen some of the crazy shit you can build and some of the crazy shit you can do with like the vehicles and whatnot in this game. Like, I don't know if it's just because I'm too early, but like, as of right now, I don't think I could build a vehicle. I know I technically could, but unless I'm just like not thinking comp like far enough, like I'm not thinking complicated enough. Like, I don't think I, I don't think I'm at a point yet where I should be able to build like crazy flying contraptions. Like I wouldn't know where to start. Like I I spent like I spent like 20 minutes building this like cart thing with four wheels that I couldn't get to move. Oh. Well, okay. You know what I mean? So Which early I thought days. Was kind of you know, what you will I mean, I mean, and and I guess this is kind of I get Brad, I guess this is kind of your point and that like you will learn how to do that. You will learn the vocabulary of construction in this game. Like you will learn how pieces fit together best. You will learn what pieces you need. You'll probably learn the full like extent of all the item of all the machines that are in the game that may do things like, you know, like just kind of like structural maintenance sort of items that you wouldn't think you might need. And then you get one and you use it or you see another design that uses it. And it like, just like, Oh, and it like opens up a whole new world of possibilities for you. Absolutely. Like I understand that need to like avoid spoilers because those are really cool moments when you're like, Oh, I figured out how to make that awesome fucking motorcycle that I wanted to ride around in, you know, or I figured out how to make a, how to make an airship. Like, like all I Special. ever see are Special. are flat pieces of wood and like two by fours and and like tiny wheels yeah and like the fans yeah, yeah, okay yeah. that must that must be that I assume that's what it means there's, but also, there's I, a lot more to come and I will say that the game is constantly throwing at you opportunities to build every yeah. every oh, one yeah. of those house sites that you find along the road is a building station for creating whatever you want right right oh, but sure. it's also just full of boards and two by fours and yes yeah. wow. and Not wheels when you, you need to do the cooler right. when you get like when yeah, yeah yeah but but when you go into other areas of the game those project sites are filled with like zonai machines instead of Can I ask a question uh, just yeah. personal i mean a question about like the resources mm -hmm. of the, like the zonai stuff because when i was playing this like again i'm very early mm -hmm. and i I, I was a little confused about the Zonai resources, and now I, f I feel like I screwed up because I dumped like all my Zonai shit into like a one of those gotcha, gotcha pond thing things, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh wait, I was supposed to be saving these to like upgrade my batteries. That seems like way more important. Were you dumping them incorrect? The, wait, were you dumping the material or the charges? Both, I think. Okay, I just okay. the charges are what I would use for the machines. Yeah. Oh the no. The, the charges I don't need to upgrade my shit? The, the no, charges, the charges, you either use them, you use them as, like, consumables to add power to your existing meter, like, okay. while it's operating, or you use them as the currency to so unlock it the gotcha. it's okay that I use those for the gotcha. Yes. yes. The the material, yes. like the ore, the the Zor, Zor, Zonanite or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. that's what you need to upgrade oh, your battery. okay, okay. Like, yeah. I, I gotta say, though, like, it still makes me really anxious because I dumped all that resource, and I'm like, oh, cool, I got, like, six gliders now. But then 
you know, it's so easy just to kind of like bumble around and like fuck up some idea where like I'm trying to like fly on this thing and use a fan and like, oh, I just fell off of it. Well, those are gone. And I don't don't think this is a game where it's like this this is this is honestly a progression thing. Yeah, you you can't you can't. You can't perpetually screw yourself in this game. You you get to no, the I'm point like, where like you I'm don't. Just, it's the mentality. I'm I'm I save my mega potions. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. Yeah, there's um, there's a bit of a loop to like resource building for um, construction and for uh, batteries and things like that. That you'll you know you'll get a feel of I as you play it. the game. Yeah, score. I believe. It. Um, and once and, and that's pretty quickly. I, I would say, I would say, um, if you're really interested in that. Um, you want to go down. Um, yeah. So, so since you bring that up, I've, I, one thing um, coming into this game, we all kind of focused a lot on. Obviously, was the sky map. Which, funny enough, I haven't been back to the sky since I left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I know I'm going to spend a lot of time there, and it's crazy. You can when you like open the map, you can see the different. You can see the sky, the ground. And I did, what I didn't realize is that there's an entire fucking world map underground. They have Easy. the chasm. What? I mean, you've done that already, Easy. haven't you? No. Okay, well, oh boy. sorry. Here we go. <laughs> I thought that would be something you've no, already fine. seen. Um, I mean, it's just, it was teased. It's funny. In fact, it was teased in that, you know, that thing that kind of like the first mean, time we ever saw this game, that, that uh, teaser trailer, which is like Elden the Ring sort of situation. Uh, yeah. More. More, yeah, yeah. more. Um, the in fact, Brad, even though you, well, I don't boring? know if you haven't, just no, brown? no, it's it's I mean, it's you, oppressive, yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, um all I'm saying is what I wasn't expecting, I thought this was it, gonna be high roll oh, with like a bunch fucking of fucking damn it, man. That is like something we should be talking about a lot, like, like. No, go for it. I mean, they they I like really they now. marketed this game. They marketed this game with this whole like, hey, yeah, it's the whole map from the first game, and we added a second map in the sky. It's twice as big. You've got two maps now, and yeah. then they ship the game, and it's actually three fucking maps. It's it's a, a whole nother one underground. Like the entirety of the play space has an underground se- correspondent. It's, like it's all seamless. <laughs> And it's like, all seamless. You can jump yeah. from sky into a chasm, into the ground. Insane stuff. And like the gameplay loop underground is different than it is up on the surface, is different than it is up in the uh, in the air. And like if you really want to be like experimenting with machines and building them, like the depths is a great place to do it. And it's like almost required. Like it is such a efficient way to navigate like a really hostile, That's hard to weird, navigate space. When I first got to the ground from the sky, I started playing this game like Breath of the Wild, and it was really Mm -hmm. kind of like not fun, especially because I had not got my glider yet. And that's the first thing you should do when you get to the surface. I know. Playing this game like Breath of the Wild with no glider was bad, especially because I was getting into shrines I probably shouldn't have using some of, you know, the kind of quirky stuff you can that this game lets you do. But I got into a shrine that definitely wasn't. I wasn't able to do until I had a glider and I was trying to like brute force it and come up with ideas. And it's like, this might work in a lot of situations, but the game really wants me to have the glider here. And it like, I, I feel like early on, I'm like, am I, I'm wasting my time here. I'm wasting my time. I should push forward with the story, get more of these, get to the point where I'm not as worried about these resources and I'm, I'm doing a lot less, you know, just running around like it's breath of the wild yeah. because I really feel like I'm just sort of twiddling my thumbs and it's fun. And it's fun. I like kind of spending, Oh, I'm just going to spend the next 25 minutes making some dumb shit, but it's still fucking 25 minutes. And that's a lot for me these days. So it's a little bit weird and I know I'm going to get there, but, um, yeah, right. I don't know. I have played you know what, Darkest Dungeon two in the past week. You know, it's so very f- like fucking in front of me focused. Like, like the thing that's just f- fucking killing me about this game is Breath of the Wild for me was like what you're describing the way you're playing Breath of the Wild is very much how I played Breath of the Wild. I didn't even really use horses all that much just because yeah. I don't know. It was just kind of a pain to like keep going back to stables to unlock horses, yeah. and it was like that seemed like horses when i did use them and had like finally had 
a high enough bond with one that it wasn't like, you know, I wasn't fighting against the horse to ride it. That kind of felt like a luxury. And then they did the DLC and they added that motorcycle in. And I was like, this is crazy, right? Like, you just have a fucking motorcycle. Like, that's kind of wild. That really changes the game. Dude, like, you are a fucking homeless person if you aren't running around in, like, a hovercraft in this game. Like, it is... It bears no resemblance. Like it, it, am, it's the same game. It's useless in this game it, too. I have I mean, horses. No. There, there, horse, and I'm like, there are I building this bond. <laughs> I mean, there like there are times when it's like you can use a horse to tow a cart to pull things around, which is kind of cool. Um, but you know, you could also just build a truck and drive that around everywhere. Oh, like that would do it too. So like, yeah, I don't know. Horses are still horses they're about as i haven't useful. even managed to tame a horse yet and brad is oh not, i need to do you guys not the game have import I, your save from with this really yeah. stubborn horse you guys don't have like I'm saying, saved horses from breath of the wild yeah your saved horses from breath of the wild carry over wait I what on and, and yes. carry over with full uh bond i think I played on how do you do wait wait back up how you do you just do go that? you just go to just go to a stable talk to the guy at the stable kidding me no you have to like select one or two like, options, I, spent, like, I think. But, yeah. Thirty minutes, like crouching. No, trying that's to what I'm saying. This blue horse Nick, today. Nick, I know that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm trying to make you understand, Nicholas. This game was made by smarter people than you, and it will constantly remind you of that fact. You are constantly a sucker. You're always on the back foot. There is just like a world of creative genius just beyond your reach, and you're just like. Running around with a sword and Homeless. shield. Hit, Homeless. Like, yeah, like hitting goblins, being like, oh, I got an apple. Oh, great. Like, like, yeah. oh, this game is so weird and wild. And this is what I'm talking about when I say it is ruining video games. Like, it is just so good. Ah, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm losing it. Schedule and a big moon. You Shut know, the fuck. Because that's real genius. Oh. Well, okay, you can't. Okay. Real quick. DLC. I think this is Brad. The old, like, that, somebody's going to build a time machine in this game eventually. And then we're all going to be like, oh, sick. Like, and this is what the third Breath of the Wild is going to be about. Can, can, like, speaking of time travel, has anybody... Okay. I'm not saying this is in the, the new Fast and the Furious movie, but I hope they get to that point. I've not seen it. I know nothing about this right. new movie. But in the last movie, they sent a car into space with people in it. Time travel. That's all you can do now. Can they do are the they DeLorean multiverse time travel? I swear to God, if Fast and the Furious doesn't end up with time travel, do you remember the? Do you remember the headlines about how yeah. they were discuss? They were actively discussing a Fast and the Furious and Jurassic World crossover. Do yeah. It. yeah, do it, do it. Which would have been better than Fallen Kingdom or whatever. It's I mean, yeah, probably. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, here's the thing. That would be the only thing that I think gets me to watch one of these Fast and the Furious movies these days. I do it, so. Sorry for the aside. Yeah, that yeah. was uh, a weird aside. Twisted Metal uh, teaser? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really weird. Why is Anthony Mackie Why? in that show? There's a Why lot not? I don't know. I was talking about that show. with my roommate, and we were both very like, Anthony Mackie, like, okay, he's this a guy. He seems kind of cool. Why is he now, like, really famous? Like why? Like because he was. He was I know Marvel. because he was in Marvel, obviously. But it's like, come on, the Hurt Locker now. He's yeah, Captain I mean, America. Yeah, you're right. He was. He was. Locker. He was a side character in like a couple scenes in the Hurt Locker. Can I take? Yeah. He just seems like a guy. He just yeah, seems like a dude. A He's a guy. Just like a. Just like one I, of the boys. I only really know him from the Wendy Williams clip. Where he I says some really offensive that. shit about making a sandwich, or women should make him a sandwich because he like be beats dudes up for them. <laughs> well, he's Captain America. I mean, come on. He's, yeah, he's kind of. Maybe he's lame. I, I don't know. I need to do I some more research. Can I take forty five seconds to talk about Zelda before y'all interrupt Please. me again? Yes, I'm so sorry. Yeah. 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 Go. The words burst you. out of me. I it's hard. I know Chris Davis. The so I I cannot tell you how much time I put into this game because time as a concept has been erased from me. I don't know what time of day it is at all. All I know is it's work hours and then Zelda. So mm. I, I I know it's a two digit number. I'm worried it might be a three digit number by this weekend. Um but the thing I am loving about this game is that 
it is a full on sequel in every aspect possible, especially narrative. They they have done sequels to Zelda games in the past, but Pretty unusual though. Yeah, it's been very unusual, and the ones that actually are explicit sequels are like side titles, like spirit tracks and things like that. Not actual full well, console Majora's Mask. explorations. Link to Majora's, Majora's Mask, Mask yes, but worlds. like Majora's Mask Seek was more of a, a standalone expansion, really. Like it wasn't. What? It was like a narrative. Like whoa, 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 whoa. full on grandiose exploration. Wait, wait, wait. wait which which game did you, did you just talk about? Which one are you talking about? Majora's Mask. Have you played Majora's Mask? I love Majora's Mask. Talking? It's my favorite Zelda talking? game. Oh, you're, then what are you you're, talking about? What you're? What I'm trying to get to is that I I love how this is so much an exploration of a post. Zelda world, literally, in which you are exploring the rebuilding of Hyrule, the rebuilding of society, and and people coming back from the brink of the calamity and and starting new lives. Like all you all over the map, you find building sites for homes. If you if you can go to all these different towns that you went to in the first game, and it's like it's only like three weeks after Breath of the Wild ended. And so you're getting all these characters reacting to all those events, and it, it just feels so great to to explore so much more of this world that didn't deserve to be uh, to be removed from player control. I, I I don't know how to word it other than to say like I just it's a fucking sequel in every way possible and I love that about it especially the last the game had a story yes Brad <laughs> I I, the, the last game had more of a story than I think any Zelda game has ever had yeah and this that one is this one true. like you, no, it's absolutely like, true like, dude go back and Majora's Mask is like a like super narratively interesting game in it all is. aspects absolutely like, yes. Breath yeah Breath of the Wild is not. I disagree, but that's a video game ass video game. But like, so like, like the, the, the thing that's whole so debate cool that we always get into when someone talks about liking a story in a video game is tired. We need to stop having it. <laughs> like the, the thing that I, that my favorite thing about this game so far is exploring all the things that are barely touched on in breath of the wild. There is so much real estate and areas in breath of the wild where there is no context for everything that's there. And now you find the game gives you that context and you go explore it and you do more with it. It is so cool to see all these locations that you went to. And you're like, OK, this area is cool, but there's no gameplay consequence. No, no interaction to do here. It's just a location. It's there. It just looks pretty. It's just pretty. Now it's no longer pretty. It's an actual fucking <laughs> thing. It's fucking ugly. All right. Well, let's not throw <laughs> Breath of the Wild under the bus. That world was filled with all kinds it's of crazy. Only it absolutely was. 30 absolutely. frames per second. But it's... Okay. Okay, real quick. Because Crispy said it. I was try I was oh, like... Okay. Oh, 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 he said the words. Because I know I popped into Discord the other day, and I know, I know I popped in just at a bad moment when someone was popping off about performance issues, whatever. But I've played this game for 12 hours was now. It, and was it Drunken Merchant? Uh, yes. Yeah, he's a He's an avowed people were, But a few other people were jumping on this on that boat, right? And, and, and I just want to say, after spending 12 hours with this game, it even played some of it in handheld mode. Not a lot, but a, a little bit. Um, the only time I've seen this game dip below 30 to the point where it was like, ooh, was whenever I, I, I caused like a huge fucking explosion, right? And there's fire all over the screen and it dips for like a hot second. And then as soon as like the smoke clears, it's back to normal, which is not a lot. But like there's people talking about the like, performance issues with this game. Like it's like... Like it's hurting their eyes just playing the game, and I'm just like, I don't. Are you talking about Arthur Geese? I don't know. Is, is he saying that? I mean, I haven't been listening to po I haven't been listening to podcasts much. Obviously, yeah. I've been on vacation was... and sick. So, no, what, was, he... what was Jaffe saying on Twitter? Uh, he posted like some AI art something that of was Zelda. Where... <laughs> he's, just, um, he's just being. That's Jaffe. where I saw the people quote tweeting him. Um, like. 
like I know on Easter one hand we have we have to talk about the like the switch or something. Like we we have to talk about the fact that the switch is getting old and like yeah. It, yeah. obviously it's not ideal that this is stuck on the switch. No, but it, like I'm impressed. It, it is an like, it is a massive dude, this game accomplishment. But I, this I'll game is I, sixteen I, gigs. Yeah. How this game is sixteen I, gigs? I I downloaded I downloaded the like the Lord of the Rings. Uh, theatrical edition or not the uh, extended edition all three movies together more than 16 years <laughs> I mean yeah. I get it I, I get it because obviously it's not running at a su- super high resolution so like that's obviously going to have a huge impact on it but still like you would think that like the scale of the world the fact that it's seamless the fact that there's essentially three maps layered on top of each other that can be traversed seamlessly the fact that it doesn't dip below 30 frames per second every five seconds is insane to me now i'm not saying it's not annoying every once in a while but like have i has it has it ever once hindered me from enjoying my experience or or like stopped and made me like really think like god it fucking sucks that this is on a switch like no mm. dude i'm just enjoying the shit out of this game is it and I, disappointing that it's not perform- better than the original game yes is that a wait, wait, bad you, thing you think it's no. not performing better than the original game I think it's I think on it par. Better, better than the original. The original I mean, it feels great. on. It feels on par with the original launch version of Breath of the Wild. I. I mean, I. Th- I think if, if anything, it's better. But like, but I'm, but I'm not saying it's a bad I, thing. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's otherwise solid. This is it's, a, it's, it's whatever. Yeah, it's just. Whatever. It's just. It's just a. It's just a. a you know. A, a blip the, you know. Of the, part of the conversation that like kind of like every once in a while crops up and just completely dominates and it it's it's kind of, this it, part of the reason I like part like, of the reason every why every other game this year has been a train wreck in ter- like pc ports wise and stuff like this is definitely fine every um no not <laughs> the reason why the file size is so low and the reason why it's so efficient running on the switch is because there's not much voice acting in the game <laughs> Can, can can I do my rant now? Dude, so... <laughs> oh, God, here we go. Oh, yeah. no, here we go. Me, you shut the fuck up, Nick. No. no. Look. No. Wow, that was hard. My mother... I'm Look. sick, bitch. Leave me alone. No, no. Don't, I don't want anybody here making any dumb fucking excuses for Nintendo. These Back in my day, when we played a Mario game. I, like, like, the last Zelda game sold, like, what, 30, 35 million copies, and this one's already, like tracking to like outsell breath of the wild like uh, nintendo it's all the video game money in the world um dude i got my son all hyped up for it i we i I let him stay up late because you know i i was waiting to you know find time to like start the game and he was all amped and all excited and we started it up and sat down and like fucking 90 seconds into the game we were already reading which by the way he doesn't know how to fucking read like these are this is a family company like a kids game company and they're not putting voice acting in their fucking zelda game their mario games you have to fucking read it all curiosity just out of curiosity how much how much space can you fit on like how much space is on those cartridges no No, i'm curious this is a genuine question fucking question play a 150 hour xenoblade game where every line is voice acted they got room listen bitch i'm literally asking how much space is on a cartridge that's all i'm asking it's a number then don't shut the fuck up i'm saying they can they have the room to voice act the game and they're choosing not to and i don't get it i don't get it brett I just want you to know, I, I want to rewind for just a hot second. I was not trying to trigger your stupid fucking rant right there. I was literally was. trying to ask you a serious question. Sure. Sure. It's a number. I, I don't know. I to give you a smart uh, ass answer. No, I guess I, I come I'm in. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at Nintendo because Fire Emblem is fully voice acted now, and that's a 150 hour game. Xenoblade's a 150 hour game. Those are fully voice acted. And I'm two minutes into Zelda and I'm reading long conversations about the history of the world, and I don't understand. In terms of presentation, it makes it seem cheap and budget, and I don't understand. They do it with Pokemon, and I don't get it. You know, why? Why? Why does 
the yeah. Monster Hunter Pokemon spinoff like seem way higher budget than a Pokemon game. I don't understand why uh, Nintendo makes stingy bastard. We have this conversation every time, and I literally tell hey, you Nick. every time it's the same fucking rant, same fucking answer. They sell millions and millions and millions of these without having to do it. So why would they do it? Well, sure, but you know, it, it, it's not like a question that we're looking for a serious answer to. It's a, it's a, no, like, I think it's, it's a, a shame on question, you, though. Nintendo. Like, fuck you, Nintendo. We know, question, but though. we know that it's like the cost of localization. If they, because they're gonna send their games to every fucking corner of the world. So if they have voice actors for, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Nick, let me answer your earlier question. Nintendo Switch game cartridges come in a variety of sizes, and the largest one is 64 gigs. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. I was like, it's 16 gigs for the fucking game. How much space is left in that cartridge without the voice acting? That's all I was trying to get. It almost assuredly costs more to manufacture a cartridge with more storage. than It's fucking pennies in the grand scheme of things. Um, I'm saying they're making a choice, and it's not a money-driven choice. There's no fucking way, because Nintendo has first-party titles with a thousand times more voice acting they're being lazy like, brad the like, answer to the question is they're being lazy because lazy they don't feel like either. Like, like i'm telling you i think you, there are some what answer create... would you be would you accept here because we have this conversation every time a nintendo it. releases oh, a game think, and you think, never accept the answer creative choice that they're making you know just like a silent protagonist or whatever right it's artistic choice. I get it. some people don't like it but like why you know because and it's the same thing's gonna happen in the next Mario game, right? But like, I took my son to see uh, Nick. Nick's very frustrated. Dude, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop here. But 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 like, you know, it's a kids' company. They're kids' games, and my son can't enjoy it the same way we can, and it fucking sucks. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, I agree. I, would not I even think call... that 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 artistic choice for the silent protagonist thing explains why Link doesn't have voice acting. But there's so much dia- There's so much dialogue in this game. That is like spoken by other characters that isn't voice acted. Um, Look, I'm sorry. I, I probably made a mistake being on this podcast while I have COVID, but I'm I'm sweating like a fucking pig, and I'm have a goddamn headache. And this rant, I'm this conversation, I'm just fucking sick of having. I'm just mad for my son. That's all, Nick. You know, it's it sucks. He'll get there one day. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, like, like Nintendo's a kids' company. Wow. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. I, I would love for them to actually kind of explain why it's like that, you know, because Zelda didn't always used to have voice acting. There used to be no voice acting, and mm. then they finally brought it in, and I'm like, oh, this is great. Zelda's talking, and then, but not all the time. Mm. Just, you know, uh, isn't it? You know, just just a thing I was thinking about the other day, kind of jumping off of your point. Of your son, like this is his first Zelda game, right? Yeah, that's insane. He can't play it. Well, that, sure. that, that's the but thing. He, you, but in a couple of years, he might go back and play it, right? No, he will, and that's kind of exciting. It's not his first one. That's wild. He he, he got he. <laughs> this is a, a little story. So he was excited, kind of watching trailers and us starting to play. He's like, "Oh, I want to play a game. I want to play a game with Link in it." Because I, I gave him my old 3DS and I was like, look, I have all these games. He's like, oh, no, but I want to play a game like that one with Link in it. So I booted up mm-hmm. a Link Between Worlds because Link Between Worlds, I thought it was like a pretty easy pretty sweet. game when I played it. So I was like, he probably like this. This is smooth. I mean, it's pretty nice to play. And he's like, well, how do I build stuff? And I'm like, <laughs> mm, not, not that's all the game. Oh, my God, oh I'm, man. I'm, I'm part of it. Oh, really? Way to just fucking expose yourself there as a as a fair weather fan. Way to just like, oh, you're a late comer, aren't you, Henry? What, you haven't boned up on the classics? You don't know anything about mm. Zelda? Yeah. <laughs> what a poser. Why are you raising a poser, Brad? I don't a poser. I think he yeah. just wants to play Minecraft. Yeah. Also, no, but he was, really, he was really excited about playing the game, but I couldn't let him play it because I've seen him play like Malia's Disney Dreamlight Valley and he just, just throws all the stuff. food. Just, <laughs> to be <laughs> fair, Brad. Like, that would be tragic if he did that in my Zelda game Dude, if that's... he got rid of all my resources. So I literally just can't let him play. To, so to be fair, Brad, last week you literally said on the podcast that you were gaslighting your son to get excited for Zelda. Yeah. So, what? like, I was, I, I was excited. No, a big part of parenting is gaslighting. So I he mean. just wants to build stuff, and I can't let him build stuff because that's resources. 
He I he's a menu guy. He, like just like me. He's gonna go into the Dude. menu and he's gonna what? fuck with all Don't of my stuff and I can't you're, let him do it. You're you're raising like an a, Eve player. I wish there was a sandbox mode where he could just fuck around, but not where I'm at in the game. Oh, he he oh, ain't touching my stuff. Oh man, but like that's a possibility, right? Like they could release a DLC that's like, hey, here's a more free play for creative sure. mode. For sure. Like crazy oh man I think this game it, i think I, I i might actually just get them on banjo kazooie nuts and bolts because i feel like that game you could just really go wild with all the buildings that would honestly be better for him i think and it's it's a much more colorful yeah. game uh, a lot more visually yeah, but the, characters but the for lower six, frame rate better. the lower frame rate and resolution though it might injure his young eyes right like you gotta have oh. 60 frames a second and 4k I think Banjo, nuts and bolts might be higher frame rate than this, but oh sure, sure. I don't think he, he cares too much. I'm trying to make a fucking joke, Brad. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> oh, I, I don't do know. Nuts, I do miss nuts and bolts. There are things you can do. A lot of cool things you can do in that that you can't do here, which I kind of wish you like could. what, like um. Yeah, well so nuts and bolts you can create like various like multi-layer like contraptions because you can set different like triggers and switches to oh. like certain buttons okay. so i could have like multi-stage like transforming vehicles where i would like you know my truck would shoot out an airplane and then i'm like you know they're so both sad. cool games they're both cool games so okay. you know I mean, what would be really played. fucking cool is if you trained your son to like get really into the cooking mini game aspect of the game, and then just have, and then just have him cook like hours. all your food for you. Hours. He would spend hours making meals in the Ratatouille world in Disney Dreamlight Valley. But if when you went into the Ratatouille world, all those ingredients weren't your own ingredients; they were like unlimited. You could do whatever you want, and he would. But I can't do that in this game. No, you just stock up a bunch of food and you give it to him. And you say, "Oh, hey, time to play the cooking game," and you got all your ingredients here. Go ahead and cook some stuff. Like T to be like, fair, like he wouldn't understand that half of it's not actually food, so most it would turn up turn out dubious. <laughs> He's too oh, like whatever. he knows he knows what he's doing and he knows how to fuck it up. He would fuck it up. But although Flack brings up a good point in chat, uh, there, I didn't even know there was like manual saves and manual loads because you know yeah. Nintendo games are so like uh, your game is saved, just turn it off, you know. But Breath there's the like multiple had it too. save slots, multiple yeah. save slots. Yeah. Okay. I don't know about multiple, or even slots. multiple profiles. Like you could just make his own profile. Know, but, but see, then, I, but he wants to do what I'm doing. And I would have to start the whole. I would have to start the whole game over again to oh, get him to the man. point where he can make all this shit. And I don't want to play two games of Tears of the Kingdom. You know, he can't mm. do. It. He can't get that far himself because, well, he doesn't know how to read. <laughs> so mm. I don't know how to read. But yeah, Dang. I don't know. Okay, so I want to bring up something. It's that not a baby I, game. I, I want to bring up something good. that I mentioned like six years ago that I still get shit to this day about this game. Uh, when I when we talked about Breath of the Wild, uh, and y'all regularly quoted me as saying that I felt that the game could have used a little bit more hand holding, and of course y'all took it out of context and made fun of me for years. But <laughs> so I feel <laughs> like. like, like Nintendo like did that girl? this time. So what what, what think, was the joke? What were the jokes that we made? I, just remind me. I no, I, we're not doing that. Let me get my statement out because okay. we eventually need to go to break, or or you know we're we're gonna die. You mean? Uh, so like in this, they did exactly what I wanted from for Breath of the Wild. It just and you get a longer tutorial area on the starter Sky Island. You get more time talking to characters and getting more guidance as to what to go figure out in the world. And then they let you go. That's what I wanted. Give me a little bit more critical path. Give me more direction in what I'm doing. That's what I wanted out of Breath of Wild. They did that the in sky, this. The and sky I'm so happy plateau about that. is was more than the Great Plateau or whatever. More I, I think the, 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 the Great Sky Island, your starter area, it's it's technically larger real estate wise um but sure. there's maybe I, a little more mechanically going on between the different shrines in the sky yeah, island sure. yeah 
than in the Great sure. Plateau. I think, lest we forget, like the abilities in the first game were kind of boring. Like you're like, oh, here's your next new ability. But do you remember? But do you remember? Do you remember the first time like you saw somebody float bombs out over a goblin camp with like an octo balloon or whatever and then shoot it and drop it on them and blow them all up? Or the first time you like whacked on the boulder with the time stop ability and then grabbed onto it and went for a ride and you're like, oh my god, I've broken the game. Look at this. Yeah. This is crazy. Oh, so so quaint like, in comparison to what we have now. Like, like they, they might be boring oh. in comparison between games, and they might be boring in retrospect after putting a hundred plus yeah. hours in Breath of the Wild. But boring, for horrible. for the the majority of the experience, on average, I think they were pretty good. Especially for hey, an yeah. experimental well, title like this was a, a completely point. reinvention of Zelda. So like, both times, give them a little leverage, give them a little room. Fatal Frame in chat has a good point. Both times the tutorial area, the NPC that's teaching you everything is a king. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that weird? Although, per, I, I would say it's pretty bold king that uh, Nintendo decided to lean into a very old meme for half the, the shrine design in this game. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. We're not yeah. talking about that, are we? <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess I'll hold my tongue because I no, don't want to censored. Yeah, somebody somebody posted that the first day it was out, and it's like <laughs> I just got it out of my head, and it's fucking horrible, and we don't need to talk about that. Um, yeah, I don't know if you're like from the internet 1.0 days, you probably remember a little thing called Goatsy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just see the 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 penis, the fire penis robot. That was one of the few things I did see, and that was pretty that was cool. one of the first things I see. The thing is, I wouldn't mind seeing a certain type of thing. Like the building stuff is cool. It's the hey, did you know you could do this with rewind or whatever? Like, like I I want to consume some of the content, but I'm afraid of seeing stuff that I can't unsee, and that's what I don't want to see. So. Mm. I just I, want the aha moments for myself. Then, oh, then. yeah. No, I get that because that is the bread and butter of this game. And they mm -hmm. come fast and heavy. Like, oh, yeah. Like I said, this game makes you feel like a dumb dumb. Yeah, I'm excited to play more. But man, it seems like a lot for me right now where I'm at in my life. You know, the first Breath of the Wild came out before Henry was born. Wow. And man, that was a different time. That's what I'm saying this is this is Henry's first Zelda. Like years later, he's like like this is what like is he even gonna like video games when he grows up? Like like he's already played the best one. Are they gonna make better ones than this? Are they gonna make games and Henry's a twenty year old man playing video games, being like, oh, I don't know. this, this, this probably might be too complicated for him. I kind of want a new three D unannounced three D Mario game, Nick. You're the one. I. Think because an unannounced 2D Mario game would be pretty cool. He was I say an unannounced Donkey Kong game movie. would be pretty good. When we saw the Mario movie, he was like shaking in his seat. He was so fucking excited. <laughs> and and and, and Dude, he, he, he I watched. Just, he watched. Uh, we started watching a playthrough of Mario Odyssey, and just on like a you know an unvoiced like long play of Mario Odyssey. Yeah, and I don't have yeah. a copy of that, but I'm like, man, I bet he would like this way more than Zelda. And he's like, that's the mayor lady from Mario Odyssey and or from <laughs> New York in the movie. Yeah. And that's the hat store that they walked by when he got to the Mushroom Kingdom. And well, that's, well, Brad, that's the top hat that Bowser was I wearing. Will, I will say, I do think all of y'all should see that Mario movie. I just it's watched not... it last night for the first time. Wow. What a weird movie. I, I really like it. And it's really weird. It, yeah. it is weird. But man, it, it's the stuff that like I... Yeah, there are things that got me that I wasn't expecting. Like, oh, that's a nice little thing, or oh, that song, and like, oh, that song, or oh, the music was really good in that movie. Well, not the licensed music. The licensed music was tragic, but yeah. the uh, non-licensed stuff is really good. You could tell there was a fight between the creators of. So oh, weird. Of, yeah, the people who made Minions and the people who made Mario. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but man, yeah. just the little things were like really nice. It's so weird. I think I was. I was. I watched it and I was thinking last night about, you know, why, I don't know. I, I don't think it's quite the success that something like the Lego movie was. And I was like, why is that? They're both these like, you know, really anodyne. 
Yeah, no, I know, but it's like, what What do you, like, what is wrong with this movie that makes it not that movie? And honestly, it's like, this movie doesn't have any fucking time to do anything because yeah. it's so busy trying to run yeah, through yeah, every yeah. single reference it can hit. Like, the plot points come so fast and, like, are just gone. And it, they're not, like, particularly complicated. It's not a bad plot. The story works. It just clips yeah. along at a really weird pace. Yeah. And it's like, because because you're just trying to hit all these references and you don't have time to just, like, make a story, whereas, like, the Lego movie is just, you know, about the nebulous idea of Legos, which doesn't have all of this, like, deep lore and story and, like, yeah. reference that you need to hit so you can just do whatever you want. It's just I better don't made and actually Here. better written. I mean, it's, it's funny. This Mario movie's not funny at all. It, I don't even know if they're trying to make it's jokes. Not it's that just, funny, is I think it? they're done talking about funny. Zelda. Yeah, we kind of kind of are. I think between me and you, Nick, we're not super far. And Chris Davis and Crispy have seen far more than we have. And I don't know. We're going to be talking about it next week. We'll have a, after, so. a more in depth conversation next week, I'm sure. It's a hard game to talk about because everyone's doing different things and building different things and in different places and. Right, because it's all going to be about just what like was our, our, what was our Breath of the Wild conversations like? Probably it was just about, about cool stuff we saw. And stuff, yeah, which is yeah. And can I say it. that? Can I say that Fuse being like the direct answer for weapon durability is just like fucking brilliant. Like I love that. It? I, mean, I do. Really I do think, think that, that, that I the like. Truth. Like they like I don't know like the the number of people who were like I hate weapon durability I hope they take it out of Tears of the Kingdom got to, like an answer that they probably never even imagined that I never imagined that no one could have guessed and it's perfect like it it is exactly what I always said I wanted from a change to that specific system in that it's not just a knee jerk reaction it's not just pulling the system out it's doing something completely different that supplements the system and makes it more manageable can i say this and i i feel like we're back on zelda i feel like i can make way cooler things now with fuse like a shield with a minecart on it or like a stick with a giant door on it that's like creates wind but i still feel like Okay, well, my minecart shield broke. When am I going to find another minecart? That was super fun, and now I don't know where another one is. And I kind of wish I had one that would just last forever, or maybe way longer, because that was super cool. And I don't have a minecart anymore. And I'm like, fuck. This was sort of my issue with the durability. Is I started to get really cool, like magic wands and stuff, and I just would never use them because they would go away. And when would I find another one? Fucking talking about man, like all the magic wands in this game are crafted. Like even the ones you pick up from enemies are crafted ones you can make yourself. But when am I going to find all those materials again? You know, I I like a a lot of them, man. Like you can just sit there and like pump out like and honestly, like making magic wands is maybe like a less efficient use of those resources because you can just like make wild like elemental weapons that do weird things and you don't like like the wands aren't the only source of just like direct elemental damage anymore but that's what i'm saying like you're talking about the mine carts it's like well first of all there are a couple different places that have travel points that always spawn mine carts whatever yes. that doesn't matter second of all there's a zone a device that basically replaces mine carts later um mm-hmm. and you use that to make all your skateboards every time something breaks you can probably build something better just with mm-hmm. what's laying around like i just swear to god idea. Any of the weapons that you build out of those construct horns are better than like anything else you're going to pick up off the ground. And I, I fucking love that. I love that. I love that they came back and they said, Oh, by the way, for weird, dumb story reasons, all the weapons in the world are now even shittier than they were in the last game. And you're going to have to build them now. Like, Like that's fucking crazy. That is fucking crazy. There's one place in the world where you can go to get like old pristine weapons, like from the first game. And it's harder to get them there. Like Mm -hmm. it's fucking sick because it's like, Dude, if I take a Bacoblin arm and, like, a fucking level 3 construct captain horn or whatever and stick them together, I have made a weapon that not only is, like, more powerful than most of what I'm going to pick up, it looks way cooler than anything else I'm going to pick up. Like, it looks cooler than anything that was in Breath of the Wild. 
it, like it's just fucking sick, man. The, it's the way such I a thought, brilliant idea. I thought Fuse was gonna solve durability. Like if there's a weapon you really like, you could just fuse another rock to it, and like that would increase the durability. I mean, oh. it would still be like a rock weapon, but you could there's still a, keep that weapon going. There and is I an exploit. Of, to, there is an exploit to repair weapons. Oh, yeah. um, but it's not. I don't know. It's it doesn't seem I that practical. That. But but honestly, like some of my favorite weapons are just the ones I've built by experimenting with fuse. So it's like if I break this really sick like forty damage sword that I have, I've got the materials to make like three more. I wish I could take energy. shit apart again. Maybe you can. Because, like, you like, can. I took, I, yes. You yeah, can? There, like there's a vendor that you will find at some point in the game who can separate stuff and oh. like. I wish it was fine. just like an ability. Like, like I took a stick and then I had one of my gliders of which I had like five. And I'm like, Oh, what if I made a glider sword? And then it was just a tiny little glider that didn't do anything. And I'm like, Oh, I kind of want my glider back. Dude, this is, this a glider on a boomerang. A... It's kind of cool. There's a boomerang <laughs> in the game. There were boomerangs in the last yeah. game. There were boomerangs oh, in the first right. game. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I didn't use them much because they that's had durability. Boomerang. I love durability. <laughs> I mean, and actually, I don't have any solution for building boomerangs yet, but I bet it exists. How do we end the Zelda conversation, really? Dude, I don't fucking know. Like, what? I think it's we ended by game. saying that, yeah, you got to play it, and uh, we got to talk about it more and more for probably the next three weeks to even I, I hear there cover 50% set, of the content. Set piece moments. So I am, I will be happy when. I haven't fought a boss or done a temple or anything or like yes, a dungeon. Yes, the, ten, the big temple conversation. Time. That's what we argued about in Breath of the Wild, and I kind of want to see. I like the shrines more here, but I still haven't done a proper dungeon, so I don't know how I feel about it yet. I, I've, done I've, I've done over thirty hours in this game. I haven't done a dungeon yet. Like, oh. like I, I can go do that, but as soon as I got the main objectives and did just a little bit of them. I just went off and started doing side shit. Mm. I did hear mm-hmm. something about the dungeons, about how they're not like so different than they were in the last game, but they are like more like I don't think mechanically. Bigger, but I'm heading towards my first. Things, right? I'm heading towards my first one right now, so I don't know where. We'll Which one? The one in the with the blizzard and near the uh, Rito Village. Oh, the Rito, Rito Village, Village one. Yeah. That's yeah. the one I did. I, I do like, I, I would like to point out that the original direction for how you would go about the uh, taking care of the Guardians in the first game, they're going the, they're, they direct you in the exact opposite direction this time around. Like they want you to start in the, uh, the Heber area with the, with the Snowy Mountains and Rito um, and go try to go the opposite. I think that's, I think that's kind of people say that. And I didn't really notice the game pushing me in that direction. I didn't feel the push to go that way. I just, I, to me, when I, I looked at I'm the map, it. I thought it, it was the one that looked like the closest. The, so I just went that the, way. It's the first one they, they show you. So, cause I just did that for the podcast and they, they definitely point you in that direction. First. I guess I kind of wandered around for a while and I ended up in Zora town or whatever it's called. I still haven't been there yet. Well, we'll talk m- more about that later once we have yeah. a chance to. Once Man, we're all farther, I suppose. It's a pretty cool video game. It's really, you good. know, the, the if I had to say one, wish I had more voice acting. If I had to say one negative thing about the game with my experience so far, and it's not really a negative, it's more of just uh, a general, like with Zelda, like I, whenever there's a new Zelda game, there's always that feeling of like how they reinvent the world and how they reinvent the characters and, and stuff. And I do, I do feel as like there's that aspect of it is missing because it is breath of the wild. Like it is, the world is familiar. The characters familiar, the art style is familiar. The soundtrack is almost identical. Like it is, it's a little, it's a little sad that like so much amazing shit is, is, intrinsically linked to a game that in other ways feels very, very, very familiar, um, which I get, it, you know, it is a direct sequel, which is fine. Like, like you said, Majora's Mask linked between worlds. They've done this before. It's not entirely new, but this took five years for them to make. Um, 
So it's kind of a yeah, and you know, it's probably gonna take them five years to make the next one, especially since especially like, modern you know, video sounding, games. Well, you ever, like, play, like, ever experience something that's like so good that you're just like, wow, this is crazy, and then you start getting afraid because you're like, oh my god, like there's no the you know, this is the real world we live in. Like, how much human suffering went into making this? Like, I feel I like, mean, I feel I try like not people to, must but... have died to make this game. It's that's, too that's good. It's too thing. good. Like, they like, must like, be murdering children or something. It's too good. Look, man. So, I feel like, like, Western studios, there's a lot more of a, like, sort of a spotlight on... Like those sorts of business practices and how shitty they could be, and the, you know, new unions are pop, pop, popping up and stuff. And like, you know, crunch culture has a magnifying glass on it. But that kind of goes hand in hand with Western studios that we're seeing. And you know, if traditional like Japanese business practices, like that, like it's probably not great is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Like it's probably uh, it's pretty probably, rough. It's over probably there just well. a different kind of awful. Yeah. It's, or a similar kind of awful, maybe worse, maybe even less paid. Like, like, we, much- like, like there was stuff that, that was coming out about from software, like around the time that Elden Ring came out or maybe before that of like, dude, like some of those developers are getting paid like fucking shit. And that's not good. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah. When you put out a game like Elden Ring, that's insane. Oh, so, man. Yeah. Well, okay. To so going back to to your criticism that you had there, Nick, with the uh, how everything is more familiar than fresh. I'm literally just talking about like look at like you you had uh, I don't remember which one came first. I guess it was Wind Waker, and then you had Twilight Princess, and you just like think about like like those were two wildly different. Yes. Like True. sure, but Skyward yeah. Sword was not so like crazy different from. Twilight I think Princess. Skyward Sword. Has, I mean, Skyward Sword was not the as big a jump from like Wind Waker to Twilight Princess, but it definitely had its own unique style. Yeah. It was definitely it another was reinvention. Direct, yeah, but I, but I do think like that it stand. What I said stands true for Skyward Sword as well. It was a reinvention. It was it was a new yeah. world. It was a new art style. It was a new everything, and that was exciting. And right. you, 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 that I think that's been so intrinsic to what makes Zelda such a fascinating and evergreen series. Oh, see, I, oh, see, I, I disagree. I disagree. It was far yeah. more exciting than Ragnarok because Ragnarok was just another story in that sort of new setting, right? I know. Well, I, my problem, I mean, Zelda is very specific, is, is a very specific animal because it's been around for so many years. There's been so many games in the franchise, it's established itself. As the, like even even when you look at Ocarina of Time to Majora's Mask, which was a direct sequel, it was still like they went to a different place and the mechanics were total. I mean, were totally different and like it had this very obvious, cool, unique thing to it that made it feel very different from its predecessor. And yeah. I, I, I'm not quite getting that here. It feels right. it feels almost so, too Breath of the Wild, but like that's just that's like if I had to have one criticism of it. I'm kind of I, bummed because I, I usually had this like magical feeling when I play a new Zelda game and I don't quite feel it here because it's an interesting conversation, but I think we're too early to really kind of like, that's have exactly that what I was going because to say. I think that the game ha- still might have plenty of opportunities to give you what you want. Sure. I'm just saying usually right. Like I pop the game out of the box, put it in the, in the console, start playing it. And almost every time it's been like these magical, like butterflies, like I'm playing a new Zelda game. Oh my God, this feels, this is just so nostalgic and so wonderful. And I just like, I pop this in and I was like, all right, breath of the wild, let's go. (laughs) You know, that's like, that's, it's just a different, it's just a different vibe right out of the box. Uh, I mean, that is the same vibe. Final fantasy. And this is not the new Final right. Fantasy. It's the sequel to Final. It's Final Fantasy X-2 or whatever. Yes, yes, and that is in and of itself less exciting than sure. if it was like a complete reinvention of Zelda. I think Majora's Mask ruined people, <laughs> and Wind Waker too. I get it. I get it. I just care less about the lore in the world and the characters than. I mean, it's still fucking Link and Zelda, and you're still not playing Zelda, you know? <laughs> like, how how good has that story really ever been, honestly? I'm not even talking yeah. about story. I'm just talking about the look of the world. Like, the, like the art style is a huge thing for Zelda. Like, every, every single Zelda game they release is like, what is it going to look like? Because they always kind of knock that aspect out of the park. And while this is a breathtaking game, it looks like Breath of the Wild. 
Yeah. 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 I mean, so. th these are big conversations that we'll have later. Like, what is the next Zelda going to look like if it's not Breath of the Wild 3? I mean, but, probably Breath uh -huh. of the Wild 3 at this rate, I think. I, I mean, I Nintendo is... No, no, Anuma has basically come out and said the Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are the model for Zelda going forward. Okay, yeah, but that but, doesn't okay, mean Breath of the Wild 3. Yeah. That These are is big not... conversations for later that we're going to be yeah. having. So later. it also doesn't mean they're going to look like Breath of the Wild. It just means from a like blue pool, yeah. like a like a uh, blueprint, they're going to use these as the model, like these big open world Zelda games. Right. Um, so I mean, too soon for these combos, though. Really? Yeah, th that's I mean, what I, I want to say. Them. You're going to have them. Y'all are y'all are this, too early this on. This footage just looped three times. Yes, yeah. yes. I if I what I the one criticism I want to offer with over thirty hours of, of play so far, besides lack of voice acting. Go. No, that's I. I think that's an artistic choice. I think that's just fine. Um. I think that there is a little bit of a uh, misbalance with uh, encountered AI in the world. Um, I feel like they disproportionately strengthen uh, the enemies that you encounter uh, far beyond in, in a lot of a lot of encounters far beyond where they probably should be. Um, I mean, I found I feel like I'm finding in fighting end game enemies in what should be normally traversable areas. Uh, I, it maybe, just, they, maybe, the, maybe the developers don't want that to be a normally traversable area. No, not, just not mean. the way those are designed, not the way they're placing those enemies. Uh, those are, mm -hmm. those, these, these just seem like r normal encounters and the, the lowest I should theoretically still be encountering the lowest tier uh goblins and all those no i'm getting the the highest uh level that was available in breath of the wild and that feels weird and it feels like something that is that's waiting to be patched honestly all right well we haven't gotten far enough to really comment on those yet so i don't yes. know we'll see i'll see what happens more i play um this is going to be a right. much better conversation two weeks from now once y'all have started exploring half of what I've seen. So I'd right. like to be able to swim underwater in these breath of the wild loser games. Fair enough. All right. Let's wrap it up. With four player, four minute. player minute. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's do it. Let's go. Well, I guess my um, four player minutes, not going to be about voice acting. Because we had that you can make it about whatever you want. You can make it about um, whatever you want. I don't care. I just want my son to <laughs> you know, be invested. Um, no, it's about uh, the game I played um, a lot more of than Zelda this week, which I guess I wasn't really expecting, but it makes sense. I mean, I love Darkest Dungeon. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Darkest Dungeon too, like a whole lot. And as far as where I was versus last week, where I'm like, really, what is like the larger scope here? What am I building towards? I don't know if my my take is different yet but i'll say it's still really fun and really addictive and i've definitely been kind of having a good time darkest dungeon 2 is really fun it's a different game than the first game i might like the first game more too soon to say but i've been playing a lot of this game uh, i beat act one today and i'm kind of excited to see what act two is but uh, I felt really powerful when I finally beat that that, that first boss, um, and that felt good. Got some combos going on, and I see what they're doing with like you know the relationship stuff. Like I'm getting it more, and I'm getting to, I, I I I I'm figuring out how to get like building strength in that game and getting more powerful. But I don't know. Some of my complaints are still like big complaints. I think they're missing some of the things that make a run based game like Slay the Spire really like you uh, uh, um, like give give the runs like, the, you know, uniqueness, identity or whatever. Well, everything here feels a little samey, but the core of it is still Darkest Dungeon and that stuff is good, man. This is it's such a beautiful game. The animations of like the enemies and stuff. It, the characters are so good it, like darkest dungeon is two especially is just 
It's such a beautiful fucking game. Y'all got to try it. This seems like some shit like um, you could get into, Nick. You you were like, oh, I got to play that first one. But that first one's a very different game. I don't think you even think you need to. I only said that because I already own the first one. And I was, I was looking for something to put on my Steam Deck while I traveled, which I did, but I didn't play it. Oh, well, that first, you might... You might dig this game. You know, you're a roguelike guy now, right? Um, I just think you would really be into like the presentation and the look because I mean, that's. Oh, that's the one thing that that makes me keep wanting to try it. The other thing, the thing that stops me is when I hear people talk about how mind numbingly difficult it is or or just how oppressive it is, like how brutal it is. Well, oppressive so. in a good way. That's sort of darkest dungeon. Like I, I, I mean, the game is hard, but it's no harder than any roguelike, right? Any roguelike that wants to be hard, I think you can handle it. The combat system and stuff is so good; it's really good. And man, it's. it's I will try stuff. it. So I've been enjoying it. I've been playing a lot of it, but yeah. Um, oh yeah, my final fuck you is um, I did rant a little bit about last week about have, having new you no UI scaling. It's like, come on, we're living in a post Steam Deck world. You've been in early access. You're a high pro, high profile indie. Like, why is there no scaling for Steam Deck? I realized the other day there's no cloud saves. I've been really wanting to play on my PC, but I I, I don't get a lot of chance to play on my PC. But when I Wait, finally found this dungeon. Time, I, I, I sat down to play Darkest Dungeon 2 on my PC and there was no save data because all my play has been on my Steam Deck and I'm like, and I looked it up and there's no cloud saves. For a game that was in early access for two years from a high profile indie sequel, like there's no cloud saves? Are you fucking kidding me? That totally breaks the Steam Deck PC back and forth experience and it made me really sad. So, I mean, yeah. there, there's it questions is- I would ask about that. Like, does Steam charge the developer for using such a feature? Things like that. I don't um, even think. I don't also, think it's like, like matters. Can it's you drop in the ball and not like making sure like their higher profile releases have this shit, which they should, because like it's, it's, it's a. I kind of ranted about this, but it's the kind of thing where the first party is not making an effort to make sure third parties are doing the stuff that's cool about like their service specifically about the steam deck you know it's the kind of thing of like the ps5 controller super fucking cool but only astrobot and some first party games are doing anything cool with it because sony is not pushing third party developers you know side reality in chat says they're apparently bringing cloud saves i know it's coming but dude this shit was in early access for a long time you know it should have been ready time that it should have been ready with 1.0 what the fuck anyways that's it sorry moving on Chris Davis. Oh, me. Okay. Um, yep. Well, I guess my four-player minute is the fear, apprehension, and outright hatred of the fact that I have to work eight hours tomorrow because that is eight hours I could put into Zelda because <sighs> Zelda has become my life. That is that is all there is. There's, there, there, there are two times... There are two periods no there's there's actually three there's actually three times of my life there's there's zelda there's work and then there's sleep and that's it there's no time for food mm. there's no time for human interaction i budgeted off. special time. Time, time i count what's happening right now in this podcast as worked hours i'm going to be billing nick as soon as we're done with the podcast so like you will not I be could, paid i i i don't know about that so like i I have fallen in love with this game. I am still quite angry that Nolan got Zelda in the draft because how dare this game be so good and belong to him. And it I doesn't just belong to him. He bought yeah, it. He got, he, not, he earned that shit. So it belongs to it, him. He drafted it. He drafted it. He got it. So it belongs to him. Uh, <laughs> Chris Davis. This just what? popped into my head. But like, I feel like you're such a loose cannon. And this is what I love about you, Mr. Mortal Kombat pick three, right? My third pick, an unannounced game. I have this, it keeps me up at night. But keeps I feel you like up it, at night? I feel like if you went first in the draft, you wouldn't have drafted Zelda. And that's what I love about you. Are you insane? No, I think you would have drafted something else. And that's what I love about you. I th- I think he might be right. I think Brad might be right. I you would have drafted like we'll never know. I don't even want to know. I don't, what was your we'll first never know. pick? It was Resident, Resident Evil Four. 
Oh, you would have found some like weird, crazy thing, and we would have all fallen out of our chairs. And then number two pick would have gotten Zelda, and we'd have been like, "You're a crazy man." I I should probably do a wild pick again next year. Uh, no, because... no we're why trying not? To win. Hey, okay, that you know, you know, you can't back... script your 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 lunacy though, right? Like we can't be talking about next year yet, guys. Yeah, it's 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 still it's not even halfway through this year. I'm Let's excited. Get not year. even halfway through this year. Yeah, let's do that. More, more than Who that knows what could happen? Yeah, I don't this know. This year's been like 18 years. I, I would um, like to quickly mention that uh, I was kind of shell-shocked about LEGO 2K uh, flopping that hard. Uh, and now that makes me very nervous for Amnesia, especially since they pushed it another two weeks. Like, sure, I appreciate that they're doing bug fixing, and typically Frictional knows what they're doing, but I am now right. sharing the Brad level anxiety for like everything at this point. So, oh come on, you crybabies! Jesus Christ! Hey, Nick, I am fully on your side. I was just as upset about Redfall as you, honestly. Dude, I don't give a shit about Redfall. Look at my look at my overall. I'm not even on the board. I am below the board. I'm below the board. That, that, that cat. That. that was me. That was my spirit attacking you okay my your spirit has possessed my orange cat okay what, what's your next game nick you got final fantasy you're gonna get tons yeah. of points You'll i'm gonna get tons board. of points that's gonna be great then i'm gonna be what like if i'm lucky like mid-20s that's no, where i'll be it's gonna be tr- you look it's no, no, gonna no, be no, a I'll struggle say, until even... the end of the year especially with your list i get it but you know you know we gotta we we got Brad, you gotta let, just, you gotta let us be sad you. too. You gotta let us be sad too. I'm, I'm Brad, you lost all sympathy for me when you tried to like you tried to put yourself. You were like you and me are like underdogs now. I just I can't believe you said that to me. I can't believe you said that to me with no, seventy no, 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 fucking points on the board. You were in the same position. I'm saying we were the only ones with negative with a but game you that you were, we were underdogs. You're in second. You're in like that's, second place right now. That's. You, 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 that was not the exact quote, okay? I didn't say we're both underdogs you, I, here, okay? I want to you see were tr- okay. I will say this. You were trying well, to I comfort see- me in, 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 in my, amidst my Redfall sadness. I get it. But you, you, you tried, you were like, you and me, we're like, we're like practically the same boat here now. And I was like, no, that's not what I said. All is. I'm saying is me and you were the only one with like the tra- with like picks that went bad. At that point, we were the only one with picks that went really bad. That's true, but you did, I swear to God, you did use the word underdog to describe I your... I want to see receipts. I don't... But yeah, I'll see, I'll I, see I know what, what I'm saying, but I was not saying we're in the same boat. I, I get it. I'm just saying other people have not felt the pain we have. Now they have. Now they have. Which is good. Except Nolan. Nobody's yeah, felt my pain. Nobody else here has been has had their overall list be in the negatives. Nobody knows the pain. I, I was in the negatives for a good while. Your your entire list was in the negatives? Like your overall point count. My overall point total was in the negatives. Oh, that's insane that you're it's still in the negatives. But you know, you've have you've had so few games. So. But again, half only like three of my games are out. So whatever. Also, your sanity wasn't doubted for like four months of the year. True. I mean, I picked some. I had. I have. I have some. Whatever. We need to move on. Cri- crispy. What four player minute? Go go go. Man, you know I was gonna use my four player minute to talk about the Super Mario Brothers movie, but I kind of already did that. Mm-hmm. Oopsies. I, I, like the, I like the part when Mario put his hands up when he was running. I'm like, oh, he yeah, does he does that. Yeah. Like, yeah, there, there's a lot of, like, weird moments in the movie where they're like, okay, now we're going to do Mario Kart stuff. And then, like, they do Mario Kart stuff for a scene. And then they just kind of, like, move on. And they're like, okay, we're going to do some Super Smash Brothers. And then it's like, Super Smash Brothers. Like, I get that it's a baby movie for babies. <laughs> but... I, <laughs> Maybe this is just what I thought was the problem with the whole idea going forward, like from the get go. Is that like, what do you do with Mario? Like, what kind of story do you actually tell? I I think they, yeah, I think they, I think they like hit a pretty happy medium. Like, they got something that 
kind of made sense and hit all the notes and whatever. But yeah, like, like you're you're applying like a rigidity of fiction and of like lore or something that like Mario just doesn't have. And Nintendo intentionally doesn't handle him that way, you know. Like you they don't need more. You like, don't even. No, 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 no. But what I'm saying is like a. What I'm saying is like a. And they did. What I'm fucking saying is that like there's a continuity to the character that is assumed in the movie that doesn't actually exist in the real world. You know what I mean? Because the people who make Mario content, Nintendo, don't bother with it. So. The idea that, like, Mario is a guy from New York who's a plumber that goes to the Mushroom Kingdom and saves the prince. Like, that's not even, like, what Mario is to Nintendo. You know what I mean? They talk all the time about how they look at the characters as, like, a cat, like, a troupe of actors who just, like, play out different scenarios and do different things. Which is, I mean, it makes sense because they're video game characters and the things that they're using them for are video games that don't really need to have more than just, like, a setup. Um, and then you take that and you turn it into a movie and it feels like, yeah, it feels like a rush video game. I don't know. It's a, it was, it was just bad I feel like I had a point nothing. before Brad naysayed me, no, so if, I'm done. I'm fucking done. If Castlevania can like become a story with like interesting characters and relationships, you know, there's no reason like Mario can't like, I, I, heard I agree, someone but put up like a really good point on a podcast where it's like they're building to this moment where like oh luigi's scared he's kind of like the second and mario's the guy that does everything right and i feel like they were building to a moment where like luigi saves the day and now it's just mario and luigi and it's like there's not even any like char- basic character growth that's in every other like kids movie it like this is less than this is definitely yeah. like a minions tier like filmmaking yeah movie. And there's and like, there's like there's weird a lot little of things movies out there. This just isn't. Weird. Oh, I remember the one thing that struck me as really weird is like early in the movie, Mario meets Daisy and they like or not Daisy Peach and then they go off on their adventure, um, and they do a little montage of them traveling and then there's one scene where he's like eating the little apple fruits from from uh, fucking Super Mario World, you know the ones that Yoshi eats, and um. You see a bunch of Yoshis running in the background. And it's like, oh, look, there's Yoshi. Look, there's hundreds of them. He's running around in the background. And then, like, the post-credit tease for the movie is that, like, the next one will have Yoshi. (laughs) Like, what? Like, it's literally just, like, they they do a shot of, like, the Yoshi egg. And you just hear it. And it's like... Yeah, we just saw a thousand of them. Like, who cares? Like, that's not a tease. You already that's not, did it. That's not the Yoshi. From uh, Smash it's not Brothers the Yoshi. Yeah, and they, yeah the, uh, like, that's the one thing you got to do. If you're going to make a Mario movie, explain to me why Toad is Toad, but then all the Toads are Toads. Like, who the fuck is Toad? Explain to me why Yoshi is Yoshi. Um, I don't know. I hate that. Whatever. Well, Move on. It's I done. I like the part when they're choosing their uh, Mario Kart loadouts. <laughs> Yeah, and it's just the menu from Mario Kart where you, yeah. like, flip the different, like, yeah. yeah. God yeah, damn that's it. All we need. That's all we need. That's all it's ever going to be. I don't I need know. I know. I didn't need, I didn't need how fucking lame Toad was in this movie. Like, they gave him all the lamest. Because like, Toad is lame. Like, they know no, it. Yeah, I guess. But it's like his it lameness, Toad his lameness is Michael very King? much. Yeah. I don't know. His, his, yes. Key Michael Key, really? Wow. Yes, yeah. His lameness is not like universal his lameness is very much in like him acting like what is what you know modern day youth culture kind of thing you know like in 10 years you watch this movie it's gonna be like lamer than it should be you know what i mean yep i don't know that was a lot of talking to say nothing at all but you both think i should watch this movie (sighs) yeah yeah i mean it's it is fun it's it's incredibly digestible looking too yeah, and it oh, yeah, it looks I mean, so great. It looks incredible. I, like Chris I Pratt like isn't even like that bad or anything. It's just like yeah, okay, whatever. Just completely. No. The only <laughs> one who's bad is Fred Armisen. He was bad. Like what Who did is he, he doing in that movie? Who did he, he play? Frankie Kong. What was going oh. on with that character? Oh, is that he was like high or something? I don't. Yeah, I, I couldn't figure it out. He was. He was like. I knew. Oh, wow. or something. I just, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> what was happening? He was weird. He was weird. All right, really all right. Weird. Maybe I'll watch it. It should um, be on streaming now, I think, at this point. 
It, yeah, it's oh, like twenty five dollars. Seth Rogen. <laughs> oh yeah, he does it for a close up of Donkey Kong. It, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I didn't. It was like whatever. <laughs> Stupid. The Kongs right. were such a nothing to me in this movie. Like, eh. what you got, Nick? Four player yeah. minute. I don't know. I don't really have a plan. I don't know. I feel like I should. <laughs> I feel like I should. I should spend my four player minute now just saying. Fuck, I don't know. I feel like shit. I apologize for Nick got COVID, you guys. His, you have a legitimate uh, reason to to be No, there's no there's no excuse. His I, genetic no, code is lost. forever changed. I shouldn't have lost my shit. The door handle. Um Did you? What? Did you lose your shit? On the podcast? What? Yes? I'm, is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, I lost my shit on the podcast just a little while oh. ago. Did you not were you not listening? No, I mean, I we were talking about ma- Zelda. No. Why I mean, are you talking was... about it then? <laughs> because I, I don't know. Nick, don't we know. love you. This you is were a safe fine. space. Okay. Feel your feelings. We love you. No, I just, I just, I don't usually like those feelings to be expressed on the podcast for other people to see. So, I, you know, whatever. It's, now this is just weird. I apologize. Nothing, uh, COVID fucking sucks. Whatever compared to the dark moment, Nick. Remember, you can only go up from the moment when you clog the toilet at Joseph's. <laughs> you clog the toilet at Joseph's, and oh, you didn't want the stream to know. I don't know if they ever found out, but I'm saying it can I'm sure they would there. have eventually I'm found out. Sure you Life made sure they found out, Brad. From there. And, Brad, I'm pretty uh, sure we flipped out at you at, in that moment because you told the feed. Well, that's, that's something you just share. <laughs> <laughs> when you're on a podcast at E3 on location, you just share. Yeah, and we're a bunch yeah. of shit talkers anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wow, uh, that's embarrassing. But <laughs> let me just, you know, I, I, I will say this. I, I had this had I have had this thought a few times since I got COVID, which is the timing of when I got COVID was really, really unfortunate because it was like I started to come down with the last day I was on the ship. And I was like, oh, no, I had the worst night of sleep of my entire life on Saturday night. Sunday morning is supposed to, we're supposed to get off the ship and we were going to spend a day in Seattle. And then we were mm. leaving Monday morning and I did not sleep more than maybe 30 minutes on Saturday. I just was like, it was just the worst night. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm going to be stuck in Seattle for an entire day. Not able to leave a hotel room, probably, because I'm just sick as a fucking dog. And then Monday, I had to travel. And the entire time I'm traveling, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I, I double masked the entire, the entire way. And just getting through security was a huge nightmare. And getting to my gate and getting on the plane. They made us sit on the plane for over an hour before they pulled away from the gate. So we left mm-hmm. an hour. And then we thought we were going to miss our connecting flight to Austin, which was from Houston to Austin and there was a hot second where we were considering just renting a car from Houston and driving to Austin. Um, and I remember thinking to myself, I feel really terrible. I'm sitting here traveling, which is like the one thing I would never recommend anybody do while they have COVID. But like, I was like, I don't have a choice. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm not at home and I'm sitting here thinking about it. And then I got back and I was thinking to myself, I didn't sit next to or see a single goddamn person wearing a mask. Even with me sitting on an airplane wearing two masks, obviously like trying to like cough into my sleeve, you know, and and, you know, try my fucking hardest. Nobody even bothered to like put on a mask or anything I mean, like that. Nick, haven't I'm you like, heard? What the f- COVID is over, dude. It's, no, one's, it's, no one's getting COVID. Oh, anymore, my Nick. God. Like, I, I was just like, I was like, oh my god! Like it's, I would, I, I would not be here if I had any other options. And nobody was even making an effort. It was, it was just. Anyways, that's yeah. I guess that's my that's my fuck you of the week is just like come on people. Hey man, I what the fuck are you doing? I haven't had COVID yet, and I I send a kid to preschool. I oh, feel see, yeah. you said it earlier, like. Like you made it sound. Uh, somebody earlier made it sound like only no one was the only one left who had had COVID. But Brad hasn't had it. No one hasn't had it. Chris Davis hasn't had it. had it. Yeah, it's really yeah. just me and Crispy. That's insane. <laughs> um, you guys never had COVID. You're liars. 
I mean, I made it three years, so you got you, know. you got you got the antigens in you somewhere. I mean, Possibly. I've been if, sick many times. I will say this: I, I, I was, uh, I was starting to wonder if maybe I was asymptomatic. So like, there's no way, I, there's no way I haven't had it at this point. But this pretty much confirms that I hadn't had it because I'm definitely not asymptomatic. This fucking sucks. Um, so you know, final thought out there, guys. I know it, it's probably too late at this point, but if you're not vaxxed, you should go get vaxxed. It's fuck. I can't imagine, can't fucking imagine what it would be like to get this without being vaxxed like holy shit it mm. whooped my ass so you're so you, you basically have no sense of smell and you can't taste anything right well no that, that, that my law my my sense of taste was gone for like a day it came like it came back i can oh, taste okay. things again, but uh they they all taste weird but yeah literally when I, when I had lunch on saturday or sunday nothing couldn't taste anything um and that you know that was weird so not a fun well, experience. I was just saying you could have, if it, you still didn't have your sense of taste, you could probably just spend the week clearing out your, your fridge, eating everything that you hate. Uh, yeah, no, there was that guy, there was lot, someone on YouTube when they got it. I know a long time ago, it was like, bite. I was like, let's see if I can bite, like eat a fucking, you know, habanero pepper. And like was eating all the, like bite, like bit straight into an onion and shit. And he was like, this is weird. Just nothing. So, you know, I'm not going to push, I'm not going to like, push those boundaries and, and see how that goes. But I will say this, it does suck. Um, so take care of yourself out there, people. It's, it's, yeah. it's not really over, over. So just be aware of that. Um, but yeah. Anyways, that's it for the, for the show tonight, guys. Uh, I apologize for my illness and for being short of temper, but I mean, you're we'll on a podcast week. where most of us are screaming at each other all the time anyway. So I yeah. will Oh, I, don't think I, noticed. I know. Um, you just you got oh, the no. brain fog. It just makes you more aggressive. You mm. want to talk about brain fog on uh, Sunday night when I was slept overnight in Seattle at the airport? I I I guess I dreamt it, but I I thought that I woke up screaming at the top of my lungs in the middle of the night, and like Robin had to like calm me down, and I woke up the next morning. I was like. I was like freaking out because I was like, I have to figure out how to apologize to my wife and like be like, I'm so sorry for freaking you out last night. And she's like, What? That didn't happen. And I was like, What is happening? <laughs> like, it was just Dude. a delir. It was like a fever oh, dream or something. She's gaslighting you, man. Oh, she's God. Like what if she's gaslighting you? Yeah. What if I she's always had like these screaming night terrors and she's just never. <laughs> oh, no. It was just, no, it was like, I took a, like, I took like a NyQuil before I went to bed. So I was like, and I just had these like really weird, awful dreams that I could strangely like remember. Like part dreams. I don't know. It was just I. I guess it was just a Nyquil dream or something. But wow. man, I, I was gonna have to do some explaining on on you're the next morning. Having but... dreams because you're you're waking up a lot when you're sick, and that's usually when the dreams happen. When you're waking exactly. up, a when the dreams come. I guess so. Anyways, uh, thank you for tuning in tonight, guys. Uh, of course, we'll be back next week. Uh, next week we'll be post playstation showcase so we'll have some news to talk yeah. about i'm sure there will be some fun fantasy critic um bids, right? uh, bids mm. following yeah. that presentation Maybe. and mm. uh yeah it'll be fun and well of course we'll probably talk about more zelda i played a few games on my trip that i didn't even bother bringing up tonight because i'll you be know. talking about humanity which is a cool Ooh. exciting game i drafted mm. i played i played a nolan draft pick on my trip i played um um, um have, have a nice, have a nice death uh, I played about 12 hours of that on my trip, Random. actually. So what I about gotta... 6? Are you still playing FF6? Yeah, I played a couple hours of 6. I actually managed to get a good amount of gaming in on this trip. Um, so I'll talk about some of that stuff next week. But anyways, of course, more Zelda. So in the meantime, 4playernetwork.com. Of course, you can find us at Discord at discord.gg slash 4player. And uh, in the meantime, be good to each other, be safe, and uh, play video games. Good night. Uh...